Hello friends, I am Nesh Sheikh and today in this video I will teach you how to make a professional and beautiful e-commerce website for absolutely free. To create this online store, we will be using only best and free resources. We will be using a free theme, free page builder and only free plugins. Now for the design, features and functionalities of this website, I have taken inspiration from the top e-commerce websites in the world like Amazon, Walmart, Flipkart and AliExpress. This e-commerce website, although made using only free resources, has all the basic and essential features that a professional e-commerce website must have. In this website, you can create any kind of products, whether it be a simple product, sale product, variable or digital product, any kind of products. And customers can come to your website, add to cart any product and when they do that, shipping cost and tax will automatically be calculated based on the shipping address and product's weight and dimension. And then they do the checkout and choose the payment gateway. Now the best thing over here is that your customers don't have to go to any third party website like PayPal or any other website. You can accept credit and debit card payments right on your website. Because we'll be securing our website with SSL certificate and I'll show you a live payment in this tutorial. And once the payment is done, the customer will get all the order details that they can use later on to track the order. And every time an order is placed on your website, you will be notified through email. Now this free e-commerce has many features that even premium themes and plugins don't offer. Like the wishlist feature, order tracking feature, variation swatches and obviously the clean and modern website design. And not to mention that this website is 100% mobile and tablet friendly and it is also optimized for best SEO settings so that you get better ranking on Google search results. And you don't need any technical or programming knowledge to create this website. It's just gonna be simple drag and drop. Now before you proceed further, before I show you how to create this website, let me show you a very quick demo of this website. So that you can understand the design of this website, the features and you can see whether all the required features are available or not. Now first of all, this is the homepage of this website, of this e-commerce website. Now if you see at top over here, we have our header. In the head of the left hand side you have your logo obviously if you want you can replace this with your own custom logo. In the middle we have this simple menu. You can create your own menu. We have the home page, shop page, blog page, track order and contact page. You can create many more pages obviously. And if somebody wants to search for any specific product they can click on the search icon and they can search for that product. Then we have the wishlist icon. As I said earlier we have the wishlist feature as well. If somebody wants to wishlist any product, they can simply click on this heart icon and this product will be added in their wishlist. If I go at top, as you can see now it says two products. If I click on this heart icon, you can see these two products are now added in your wishlist. Now the second icon over here is this icon, this user icon or the person icon. This will give you this dashboard. So we have this amazing front end dashboard for our customers. So they can anytime come over here, they can see the orders that they have placed, they can see the order number, they can track the order and if, if there is any downloadable product, if you are creating any digital downloadable product, they can come to downloads and they can download that particular product. This customer can also manage their payment methods so they can manage, so they can come over here and they can add their payment method, they can add their card details so that it simplifies the process next time when they try to make a payment, this payment card will automatically be saved. They can also change their account details like password and all these things. Then we have the cart icon. I'll show you how this thing works. First, let's again come back to our home page. Now if you see, I have divided this page into different sections. Now the very first section is this section, your banner section. You might have seen a similar section on Amazon, Flipkart or some other famous e-commerce website. Here we have a title, some subtitle and two different call to action buttons. Now the background, in the background we have this beautiful colorful thing and on at top we have this image. Okay, we have this person wearing this blazer. Now my aim is to create this thing or to make this tutorial a complete tutorial, a one stop solution. So in this video I'll also cover how to create these kind of banners. So I'll show you using only free resources, using only free tools, how you can create this kind of background that I've created and then after that how you can get these kind of images for free. So if you don't already have some images, for example if you're selling shirts, if you don't have shirts, uh, if you don't have professional images for those shirts, I'll show you how you can get those kind of images for absolutely free. Professional high quality images I'm talking about. Now if you want you can redirect your customers to different page by using these call to actions. If somebody for example clicks on this shop now button, you can redirect them to the shop page or some other page. 
Then we have the next section which is this section. So you can enter some details over here for example. First of all we are entering these beautiful icons. Now these are not regular icons. I'll show you how we can get these icons for free. These are free icons by the way but these are not regular icons. These are some really special and professional icons which you can get for absolutely free. Again I'll show you in this tutorial how you can get that for free. Then we have a title free shipping. So we are saying that we provide free shipping on all orders over $200. Then we have a dedicated support again with this icon and all quick response 24 7 money back guarantee and all these options and then we have the categories icon we have the t-shirts category mugs category hats category or sunglasses category hoodies badges whatever you want i'll show you how you can create these kind of banners as well so these banners are also created using only free resources for example if you see this banner created using free resources i'll show you how we can create a banner like this then after that we can link this banner with different categories. For example, if somebody clicks on this t-shirt category or t-shirt banner, they will be redirected to a page wherein they can see only the t-shirts, all the t-shirts listed on this particular website. Then if you scroll down, you'll see we have the featured product section. I'll show you how you can mark some of your projects or how you can set some of your products as your featured products so that you can display them on your homepage. Now when you hover over this product, as you can see, the image changes. And if you see if there is if there is any product on sale you will see this minus 4% off or whatever that sale amount or discount amount is. I've already shown you this thing if you want to or if your customers want to add any product in the wish list, they can click on this icon this product will be added in the wish list. Now if your customers want to add any product in the cart. For example I want to add this product in my cart I can click on add to cart. This product will be added in my cart and you will see this thing at the right hand side. You will see this slide in at the right hand side you can see what all products you have added in your cart. What is the subtotal? If you want, you can see your cart or if you want, you can go to checkout. I'll show you the cart page and checkout page as well. First, let's see some other things. First, let's complete the home page. Now, if you if certain product is out of stock, this will tell you that this product is out of stock. For example, this one. Then if you scroll down, if somebody wants, they can click on shop now so that they can see all the products. Here we're listing only eight products, but if somebody wants to see all the listed products, they can click on this button. Then we have the client section or the testimonial section. So we are saying that we are getting 4.8 average rating. You can display some of your famous testimonials, positive testimonials. Then you can display some of your images, galleries or Instagram posts. Then we have the footer at the bottom. Your website name, your website description, some menus, support icons and a newsletter. And at the bottom you can display your copyright text. Obviously instead of this thing you can enter your own company details. Now let's open a single product. Let's see how a single product page looks like. So let's open this one. Now as you can see this is how a single product page will look like. At top you have your breadcrumb and then you have this thing. You have your gallery. So if you want to see different images of this product you can have this thing. We have different designs for single product by the way. This is just one of those designs. For example if you, want, if you don't want to display these gallery images over here at the left hand side you can display them at the bottom. If somebody wants they can click on this image and they can zoom in this image. Okay so that option is also available. The title of the product then this product is available on discount as you can see 4% discount. So you can see that this original price is striked out and the new price is this one. Then we have a short description if somebody wants to add this product in the cart they can increase or decrease the quantity. They can see the categories and everything and you can also display this badge. So we are displaying that this is guaranteed safe checkout. So because we are using SSL 256 bit security on our website checkout and everything is 100% safe. And you can also display what all payment gateways you are using. I'll give you all these images, all these badges for free. Don't worry about that. Then at the bottom you can display long description. Here you can display images as well. You can display icons and all. So basically a long description about your product. If there is any review on your product, you can see that thing as well. If somebody wants to post any review, they can select the rating. They can type in the con comment and they can click on submit. Then after that this rating will be submitted and now as you can see one review. And you can see the review at top as well. Then at the bottom you can see some related products as well. So if this customer is not interested in this product, this customer can find some other product that they might be interested in. We also will see how to create a variable product. Let me show you what a variable product is. So for example, let me open this product. So variable product is a product which is available in different variations. For example, suppose this is a t-shirt and this same t-shirt is available in different colors. If I select black color, the image changes to this black and the price changes to $110. If I select this orange color, as you can see, image changes to orange, price changes to 135. If I select white, image changes to white and price also changes. So we can also see how to create a variable product as well. Now if you want to add any product in the cart, obviously I've shown you this thing. 
If you want, you can go to your cart page, click on view cart. In the cart page, we'll see that we can also use coupons. So I'll show you how you can create different coupons so that people can enter this coupon code and they can get some discount. For example, I've created a coupon 10 off. If somebody enters this code 10 off and click on apply coupon, as you can see, it says coupon code applied. And because of this, you're getting 10% discount on the original price. Then after that, your address will automatically be generated and you will see that GST is also automatically applied. So whether your country uses VAT, GST, whatever tax system, tax will automatically be applied on this product. Obviously, if you want to disable taxation and all, you can do that thing as well. Then you also have an advanced shipping option. For example, if I want to ship this product in Mumbai, I'll have to pay $1. So for, for entire Maharashtra, I've done a setting that if somebody wants to purchase this product from this particular state, Maharashtra state, they will have to pay only $1 per product. And if I change this thing to some other state, maybe let's select Delhi state or Delhi Union Territory. If I select this thing and click on update, now as you can see the rate increases to $2 per product. Okay, so this option is also available. And after that you will see coupon off, then shipping added, GST added, and this is the total price. Now the customer can click on proceed to checkout. And here they can enter their details, like all the details. If you're doing, if your customer is doing this for the second or third time, all the details will automatically be generated. Then this customer can make payment through cash on delivery, through Razorpay. So Razorpay has net banking, internet banking, credit debit card, wallets, UPI payment, all the options. We also have the PayPal option and obviously we have the card option. If somebody wants to make payment directly on your website, they can select this option. So basically they can select their payment method and click on place order. Once your customer click on place order, they will see this page. Thank you for shopping with us and this is your order details. So what product you ordered, what is your shipping and billing address, all the details. Now this customer can simply copy the order number. They can now, you know, come in future. In future, they can enter the order details. They can basically enter the order ID, enter the email address, and then they can track the order. So if I click on track order, now as you can see, you can now track the order. So we have the track order feature as well. We have also created the shop page. So I'll show you how we can create this shop page. On the shop page, you can display all the pages that you're creating. People can sort by popularity. People, your customer can sort by average rating and so on. Okay. If your customers want to filter product, for example, if, if my budget is only $30, so I can filter maybe $70. This is only my budget. Okay. So I can filter this thing. I can select $70, click on filter. Now only products which are under $70 will be displayed. Then we have filter by color, we have top rated products, we have products category and so on. Okay, so this is how it works. Then we also have a blog page. Now in this tutorial, I'll also show you how we can create different blog posts. These blog posts will help you to generate some extra traffic through Google search results. Then we'll also see how to create the contact page as well. If somebody wants to contact you, they can fill in the form and click on send and they will contact you. Or if they want, they can simply get your details and so on. Now there are many more features available in this website, but I don't want to get in more detail over here because I've already wasted a lot of time in the introduction. And now I hope you guys have a better idea about the website that you'll be creating in this video. Now, if you like this demo website and if you want to create this website, make sure to watch the complete tutorial. Now, before you proceed further, make sure to also subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any future videos. So whenever I upload any future video, you get a notification for that. And if you like this video, give a thumbs up to this video, share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever social media platform you use. And throughout the video, if you have any doubts, any comments, any suggestions for me, you can always leave them in the comments section below. Now, let's start creating this website. Right, so now to create any kind of website, whether it's an e-commerce website, a simple blog, a business website, any kind of website, we need two basic things, a domain name and a hosting account. A domain name is simply the name or the URL of your website, for example, blogdude.com, youtube.com, google.com, neyashik.com, all these things are different domain names. So we'll also have to register a new domain name on the internet so that whenever someone wants to visit your website, they can simply type in this domain name in the browser URL bar and they can land on your website. Now the second and the most important thing is your website's hosting. Hosting is basically a server or a computer wherein your entire website is saved. So if you see this website from top to bottom, all the different products, all the different pages, media files, this entire website is saved in a server and that server is running 24 seven. So that whenever someone wants to visit your website from any particular country at any given time, they can always see your website live because your server is always running 24 seven. 
Now hosting is the most important thing about your website because everything related to your website is directly or indirectly dependent on your hosting. So your website speed, your website's performance, the user experience on your website, your website security and even your website's ranking in Google search results is totally dependent on your hosting. So if you've selected a good and reliable hosting, your website speed and performance will be amazing. You'll get better ranking in Google search results and also you'll have better security. So it will be very difficult, almost impossible for anybody to even attack or hack your website. Also, we'll make sure that we have SSL certificate installed so that we can accept online payments. Without SSL certificate, you cannot accept online payments. But we have SSL certificate included in this hosting that we are going to choose. Now, there are literally thousands of different hosting providers available in the market. But unfortunately, only handful of them are really good enough to consider. But you don't have to worry about that. You can simply open a new tab and type in blogdo.com slash hostinger. This link is also given in the video description below. So you can simply click on that link and you should be redirected to this page. Now, this is the hosting that we'll be using and this is managed WordPress hosting. So this hosting is specially crafted only for WordPress websites. This will give you super fast speed and super secure WordPress website. Here, if you scroll down, you can see they're using light speed servers that will improve your website speed and performance. If you scroll down, you can also see this is very affordable. If you compare it with some other hostings, this is very much affordable. Now, there are four different plans available. For most of you guys, I would recommend you to start with this WordPress starter plan. You can see most popular. Obviously, the higher plan you select, the better you know resources you'll get, the better speed you'll get. But I think for most of you guys, you should start with the most popular plan, the WordPress starter plan, which is just $4 per month. Again, I'm saying if you compare this with some other hostings, which are like, you know, 15, 20 dollars per month. This is, you know, a very small amount. And this is the only thing that you have to purchase. Rest everything, as I said you earlier in the introduction, theme, plugins, page builder, everything will be free. This is the only thing that you need. And another great thing over here is that you can create 100 websites with one single plan. So today you're creating this website, this e-commerce website. Tomorrow, if you want to create another e-commerce website, third, fourth, fifth website, again, you don't have to purchase a new plan. You can host all your website. You can save all your websites in one single plan, this cheap plan, WordPress starter plan. So you can host up to 100 websites in one single plan. You're also getting 100 GBs of super fast SSD storage. So website speed will be approximately 30 to 40 times faster as compared to other hostings. We are getting free SSL certificate. We are also getting free domain name. So you, if you want to register any domain name, you can register it for free. One domain name is absolutely free. We have unlimited bandwidth, Google ads, credit, managed WordPress. As I said earlier, we are using managed WordPress to make sure that you're using WordPress experience is super smooth. Here we also have WordPress acceleration. So they're using inbuilt cache to speed up your website and they're using light speed web server with that. Then we have WordPress multi-site WP CLI, which is very important, especially after you know, the latest PHP version. Then after that, you also have so many other options. We have multiple databases for different countries and so on. Now, if you're watching this video from other country, for example, if you're watching this video from India, you might be directly redirected to hostinger.in instead of .com. So that is a great thing, actually, because based on different countries, they have many different. Uh, for example, if you click on English at top, you, are, you can see they are available in so many different countries. So this is a truly multinational company. If you select India, you will see it will display different payment gateways for India. So if you're from Argentina, I would recommend you to select Argentina so that, you know, it gives you more option related to, you know, payment gateways. For now, just select this plan, WordPress starter or whatever plan you want. Now they will give you this option. What billing cycle do you want to register or do you want to go with? Now, if you go with the 12 months plan, you can save up to $57 and you can save some more money. I'll give you a coupon code in the next step that will save you, that will help you to save some more money. So as you can see, this is the 12 months plan. If you go with this thing, you have to pay just $78 or something like that approximately. If you go with two years, you are getting even more discount. So instead of the regular $650, you just have to pay $5.50 cent per month. And not only that, another great thing about this hosting hostinger is that they have even renewal prices discounted. So for example, if you select some other hosting like AB hosting, you have to pay like 10 or $12 per month for the first year. And after that, you have to pay like $30 per month after one year. But here, even after two years, if you see if you're selecting 24 months, this will expire on 2024. This will give you the expiry date like when the two year will end. Now, after two years, still you're getting a discounted price. Instead of $14.99, you're getting $8.99. 
So even after two years, the renewal price is also discounted, which is really unique. This is probably the only hosting that offers this thing. And obviously if you go with four years, you will get even more discount. Now, what I would recommend you to do is, I would recommend you to go with 24 months so that you get bigger discount. So instead of 57, you get 63 plus your renewal price is also smaller. So I would recommend you to go with this one. Now, the first thing that you need to do is basically we have selected the first option. We have selected the billing cycle. Second thing that I would recommend you to do is enter your email address and very carefully make sure spelling and everything is correct because this is going to be your login email ID. So whenever you want to log into your Hostinger C panel or they call it H panel, whenever you want to log into your Hostinger H panel or dashboard, you will have to enter this email. So make sure you enter your correct email address. And after that, you have so many different payment gateways. You can make payment through credit debit card, through Google Pay, through Alipay, PayPal, and you can also make payment through CoinGate. So you can even use cryptocurrency for this. Now, as I said you earlier, again, let me actually go back and select India over here so that I can show you based on different countries, you get different options. So here, as you can see, I've selected India from here. Okay, I've selected India. Now, once you select India, you and if you select this option, add to cart, and if I follow the same process, now as you can see, I have net banking because of India. I have UPI, which is a unique payment gateway in India, Pay Paytm, which is a payment gateway in India. So based on your country, you, they will have different payment gateways as well. And by default, this Nayar coupon code will automatically be applied for you. This will give you further more discount. If, the, if it is not applied for you, you can just click on this thing, have a coupon code and you can enter the coupon code Nayar, N-A-Y-Y-A-R. Now, as you can see, the regular price is 700 uh, rupees, which is around $100. And if you click on this thing, if you enter my coupon Nayar and click on plus, now, as you can see, you get more discount. So you have this option. Now, once you select the payment gateway, for example, if you're selecting credit debit card here, Visa, MasterCard, Rupee, everything is accepted. So whatever payment gateway you select, click on submit secure payment. Now, once you click on that payment button and once you make the payment in the next step, you will see a screen. And in this screen, you'll have to enter your password. So you'll have to set a password for your account. I'm not seeing that because I've already completed this thing. I've already set up this thing. But if, if you're doing this for the first time in the next step, you'll have to set a password. So whatever email address you have entered in your previous step and whatever password you're setting right now, this thing, this email and password will become your login credentials. So whenever in future you want to log into Hostinger, you'll have to enter that email address that you have entered in your previous step and this password, whatever you're setting right now. Then after that, you'll get this setup, this start thing. Just click on this start button and this setup will start for you. First of all, they'll ask a simple question, whether you're creating this website for yourself, for a client, for a company or for someone else. You can just select any anything from here. I'm selecting myself. Then they will ask you whether what kind of website it is, business, blog. Now, this is just a simple survey. If you want, you can just skip it. So click on this skip uh, icon or link at the bottom. You can just skip this thing if you want. Now, what platform do you want to use? WordPress, WooCommerce, other, or if you want, you can even migrate your website. So if you already have your website created with some other hosting and maybe you're not satisfied with the website speed and performance, you can select the migrate option and they will migrate your website for absolutely free to Hostinger. But in this case, we want to select WordPress. We want to use WordPress. We obviously want to use WooCommerce, but that is later on. For now, we can just select WordPress. So select WordPress and click on the select button. Now you have to set a email address and password for your WordPress account. Now this will be a WordPress dashboard email and password. So this email and password also you have to remember. If you want, you can set the same email and password over here as well so that you can log into your WordPress dashboard. So set anything, set any email and password over here and click on continue. And now in the next step, they will give you some pre-built designs, pre-built templates. So some pre-made websites, if you want, you can select any one of those templates. If you want, you can click on show more. They will show you some more templates. I don't want to do that. I'll click on skip. Then in this step, you can claim your free domain. As I said you earlier with this plan or with any plan on this website, you're getting a free domain. So if you want to claim your free domain, just click on select and enter whatever domain you want. For example, if I want nayashik.in, you can select .in, .com, .net, whatever you want. If I select nayashik.in and click on search, if this domain is available, they will tell me that this domain is available and I can click on continue. This domain will be added in my cart and I can get this domain for free. Now, if you want to use one thing, if you want to do one thing, if you, for example, have already registered your domain name on some other website, maybe on GoDaddy, Namecheap or some other website. And if you want to use that domain name with Hostinger, you can select this option, use an existing domain. And then at the bottom, enter that domain name that you have registered on GoDaddy that you want to use with Hostinger. 
and click on continue. Now in the next step, we'll see how to link your GoDaddy domain with Hostinger. Now in the next step, it will display you where your domain name is hosted. For me, under provider, it is saying NA, which is not available or something like that because I just changed my name servers. But if you're doing this for the first time, again, it will tell you the provider name, whether it is registered on GoDaddy or so on. And it will display your current name servers. You don't have to, you know, this is not really important. Just click on continue. And now this will tell you the final setup. So for you, the server location is Asia, which is selected based on your location. Obviously, if you want, you can change this thing to something else like Singapore, Europe, US, wherever you want. If you're from India or Asia, you have to select India or Asia. Or if you're from some other country from Europe, you can select some, you know, name server or some data center in Europe. Then after that, click on this button. And now this setup has started. This will take around two to three minutes. So let's wait. All right. So as you can see, when this is completed, you will get four different options. Uh, basically, if you if you will get the first option, connect your domain only if you're doing if you're connecting your domain, if you're, if you're selecting some external domain name. Now, very first thing before we proceed further, before we go to our WordPress dashboard and do other things. First, let me show you how you can connect your external domain name. Now, this is only for those people who, who are selecting some external domain. If you have just registered a free domain with Hostinger, you don't have to do this step. But if you have selected an external domain and if you want to connect that thing, you can select this option, connect your domain, click on this connect button. Now you have to select your provider. So for example, GoDaddy, Hostinger, whatever it is, you know, so for me, it is GoDaddy. So I'll select GoDaddy and after that, click on let's start. Now, based on that, for example, based on GoDaddy, they will give you a video that you have to follow the exact video so that you can change your name. So you don't have to watch this video because I'm showing you how you can do that thing. Now, this will give you your name servers. So these are your name servers that you have to use. Now, first of all, do one thing, go to GoDaddy.com, log into your account. Once you log into your account, you will see all the domain names that you have registered with GoDaddy. For example, I want to use this domain, BlogDude. Okay, so I want to connect this domain with Hostinger. So I'll click on that domain, scroll down, click on Manage DNS. And now we have to change the name servers. Here you have to see this option. You will see name servers, click on change. And they will give you this option. Just click on this link at, at the bottom, enter my own name servers. Now delete these two name servers first of all. Come back to your host in your website, copy your name server number one. Okay, just copy it like this. Come over here, paste it under name server number one. Similarly, just click on this thing. It will be copied and paste it over here. Click on save. Now, once you click on save, it can take up to 24 hours for your domain name to link with hosting or whatever hosting you're using. So by that time, you can wait till 24 hours. And after that, you can come back. Obviously, it will not take 24 hours. It can take up to one hour. 30 minutes, five minutes, you know, it, it depends, but maximum you can take, you can think of 24 hours for now, just click on finish or just cut this thing. So after this, you can, you will be redirected to your edge panel, or if you want, you can just click on hostinger, which is given at top, or if you want, you can just type in edgepanel.hostinger.com. You will be redirected to your dashboard, basically your edge panel. Now here, if you go to hosting, you will see what all hosting you're using. Your domain name will be listed over here and WordPress will be automatically installed on your domain name. So you can click on this thing. You can click on manage and click on dashboard. You have your dashboard over here. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to use this subdomain. Okay. Webshop.blogdude. Now, when you're doing this for the first time, this is how it will look like. This is how your WordPress will look like. You can see all the details. You can see what PHP version, what WordPress version you're using and all that thing. Now make sure that light speed is enabled for you. Make sure that this is on very important. This, as you can see, will, in, will improve and increase your performance. Okay. By enabling this caching system. Then after that, also make sure SSL certificate is set up for you. So click on this setup and select this option. Click on select your domain name, click on install SSL and make sure your SSL is installed. This will uh, reload for a few seconds. And after that, this will install SSL certificate for you. So make sure these two things are on light speed and SSL. Now, here, as you can see, this is also enabled. Light speed is also enabled. Once these two things are enabled, now if you want, you can just click on edit website and you will be logged into your WordPress dashboard. And this is your WordPress dashboard. If you see this for the first time, this is how it will look like. Now, if you want, you can always come to this edge panel, hosting panel, hosting your panel, and you can always click on edit website. You will automatically be logged into your dashboard. You don't have to enter your username and password. Just you saw on your screen. I just clicked on this button and I was logged in automatically. Or if you want, you can do one thing. If you don't want to follow this process, if you don't want to go to hosting your cPanel, just want to log in directly. You can enter your website name and after that, put a forward slash 
wp hyphen admin and after that this will ask you your username and password enter that and you will be logged into your dashboard basically this is your dashboard link website name slash wp hyphen admin now whenever we install wordpress on a new domain name there are a few basic things that we have to understand and there are a few basic settings that we have to do first let's see them now first of all you will see a lot of widgets over here we don't need all these widgets so you can just click on screen options and untick everything from here. These are not really important or useful. Make sure you have a nice and clean widget area. Then after that, the second option is this post option. Under post, you will see one blog post will be already created for you. Hello world. Later on in this video, we'll see how to delete this thing. And after that, we'll create our own blog post. These blog posts, as I said earlier, will help you to generate more traffic, organic traffic through Google search results. Then we have the media option. Now under media option, whatever media files, images, videos, media files you have in installed on your website, all those media files will show up under media library. Then we have the pages option. Here you will see few pages will be created for you. Now this pages option will be used to create different pages like your about page, home page, contact page, all those different pages. Then we have the comments option. Now whenever there is any comment on any blog post or whenever there is any review or comment on your products, you will see all those comments over here. Now if you want, you can approve them, unapprove them. If you want, you can reply them from here. If you want, you can delete them as well. Then we have two options, opt-in monster, WP forms. These are not really important. Leave them. In fact, we are going to delete these two options now. First click on appearance. Now under appearance, you will see there are few themes given to you and out of this, 2022 theme or whatever theme you, you if you're watching this video in future maybe 2023 or 4 theme will be activated for you for me right now 2022 theme is activated now if you see your website if you go to your website if you come over here right click over here click on open link in a new tab you will see this is how your website is looking right now okay this is how your website will look like now this design of your website is because of this theme 2022 theme if you use some other theme for example let's go ahead and activate 2020 theme Activate this theme, come over here, refresh this page and now as you can see our website design is completely changed. So this is basically what a theme does. A theme changes your website style and appearance. We don't need these themes so we can just click on them and delete them. And we don't even need this 2020 theme or any other theme. We'll be using a free theme but that is a much better theme. These are not really good. Then the second option is your plugins option. So we have just seen a theme is basically the design or appearance of your website. So change the theme, change the style and appearance of your website. Now what is a plugin? A plugin is kind of an add-on or a software that will add some extra features to your WordPress website. For example, right now our website is just a regular blog. We don't have any e-commerce related features like add to cart feature, products feature, checkout feature, payment gateway. All these features are not available on our website. So for that thing to work, we'll have to install some other plugins. Okay, that will enable all those extra features. For now, you'll get some plugins over here. We don't need these plugins. These are all extra plugins. So I would recommend you to tick mark this thing. This will select all the plugins. And under bulk action, select deactivate and click on apply. Deactivate all the plugins. Now again, select this thing and delete everything except for this one. Light speed, uh, light speed cache. Just deselect this thing. Rest everything should be selected. So select everything except for light speed cache. Now under bulk action, select delete and click on apply. Delete all these plugins. Now basically we don't want to keep any extra theme or plugin. Just light speed, you can activate this thing. This will improve your website speed. Then we have the settings option, click on that. And over here you can change your website name and description. So right now your website name will be something, whatever your domain name is. Maybe I want to change my website name to blog dude. And I want to describe my website in few words. Okay, so maybe best e-com website, something like that or whatever you want. Okay, so enter your website name, describe it in few words. Then we have the WordPress address and site address. Now over here, instead of HTTP, type in HTTPS so that your website is secure. Now type in HTTPS only if you have installed Word, only if you have installed SSL certificate. So if SSL certificate is enabled for you and you have enabled force HTTPS only then type in HTTPS okay then after that tick mark this thing anyone can register so that people can come they can register and they can create a new account on your website your customers can create a new account on your website now select your time zone based on your country select your time zone now click on save changes now before doing that thing once you click on save changes you will be logged out you'll have to log in again click on save changes now as you can see you're logged out 
enter your username and password and click on login. Basically enter your email address, whatever you have set in your previous step and password and click on login. Again, I'm saying if you don't remember your e email address and password, go back to your edge panel, just click on edit website, you will be automatically logged in. Now under settings, click on permalinks. And over here, some other thing will be selected. Sometimes day and name will be selected. Sometimes custom structure will be selected. You have to select this permalink structure, post name permalink structure. This is the most SEO friendly permalink structure. So select post name and click on save changes. And with this, we have completed all the basic and important settings related to your WordPress website. Right, so now let's do one thing. Let's install the free theme that we need to create this beautiful website. And let's also install all the required free plugins. Now, first of all, click on appearance. You'll see this is the theme that you're using right now. Now to install the theme, we'll be using the Woostify theme. So to install this thing, you have to open a new tab, type in blogdoodcom slash Woostify. Again, you don't even have to do this thing. This link is also given in the video description below. So you can simply click on that link and you should be redirected to this page. And here we have to just click on get Woostify for free. You can download it for free. If you don't see this link, you can see, you can go at the bottom. Now this is available in premium version as well, but we are going to use only the free version. So if you don't see that button, you'll see it at the end, you know, at the end of this page, you can click on this thing. You will see the pop-up, enter your email address and click on download and subscribe. Once you do that, you will now be redirected to this page and here you can just click on this download now button and you can download this theme for free. Now to install this thing, you have to again come back to our dashboard, click on appearance. Now click on this add new button. Now click on upload theme because we have this file, we just need to upload it. So you can simply select this file, choose this file and click on install now. So this theme has started installing. Once it is installed, you'll get this activate link. You just need to click on this activate link. And once it is activated, the very first thing that we want to do is uh, cut any notices that you see. And we now we can also delete this 2020 theme. So delete this theme as well. And now the very first thing that I want to do is I want to enable auto updates so that whenever this theme is, you know, whenever there is a new update available for this theme, it will be automatically, you know, updated. Now we need few plugins as well. Now the first plugin that we need is Elementor Page Builder. So it's a page builder that will help us to design this page, design not only this page, but the entire website. So blog page, track order page, all the other pages. And for that, we'll have to again open a new tab, type in blogdo.com slash Elementor. Obviously, this link is also given in the video description below. Don't need to do this thing. Just click on that link and you should be redirected to this page. Now, Elementor is also a premium one, but free version is also available. We just need the free version. But obviously, if you want, you can go ahead and purchase the premium version to get more features like WooCommerce Builder, Single Product Builder. Now, a lot of e-commerce features are available. Because I promised I'll be using only free resources, we'll be using the free version. So click on this Get Started button. Here, as you can see, at top right corner, get started button or whatever button you see just click on that button then after that you'll have to create a new account as you can see just enter any email and password a new account will be created for you if you already have an account you can click on login and just log in with your account now they will ask you a few questions like oh, who are you building this website for for a client of us for somebody else where do we work as a freelancer agency now this is also just a simple survey whatever you fill in does not matter you can even skip this thing now they will recommend you two plugins, two uh, options. We don't want that. We want the free version. So if you scroll down, you'll see free version is available. Basic free version. Okay. Continue. Click on this continue button. Now enter your domain name. So this is my domain name. Let's enter it over here. This will check whether you have WordPress installed in it or not. If it is installed, you will get this button install Elementor. Now this will open your dashboard and you just have to click on this install now button at the bottom right corner. Click on this install now button. This plugin will be installed for you. Now, once it is installed, you will get this button activate plugin. We don't have to activate it right now. We'll activate all the plugins at once. First, let's install all of them. Now to install all the other plugins, you can do it right from here. So just click on plugins. Now click on add new. Now the first plugin that we want from here is the WooCommerce plugin. So if you just search for WooCommerce, this is the most important plugin. This will add all the e-commerce features to your WordPress website. So make sure you install this one WooCommerce by automatic. It has more than 5 million active installations. So this one, once you install this one, next plugin that we need is wishlist plugin. And obviously this plugin will add the wishlist feature. There will be two options YITH and TI WooCommerce wishlist. I would recommend you to go with this one TI WooCommerce wishlist. So install this one. 
and this will add this wish list feature so you people can click on this heart icon and this product or whatever product you want it will be you know added in your wish list so this feature will be added by this plugin next plugin that we need is the contact form 7 to create our contact form on the about us page or on the contact page so if you search for contact you will get many different contact form plugins we need this one contact form 7 install this one and again as i said earlier this will be used to create the form on the contact us page okay this form if you want you can go with some other plugin as well i'm using this one then we need another plugin for variations okay so search for variation you will see this option there are many plugins again for this as well i recommend this one variation swatches for woocommerce by imran ahmed install this one this is the most easiest to set up okay so this is the one this will be used to create different variations so whenever you create any variable product you can create these kind of boxes for color for size and so on so this plugin will be useful for this now once all these plugins are installed you can now click on plugins from the left hand side and we can activate all of them at once so simply tick mark this thing under bulk action select activate and click on apply so this will save you some time you can activate all these plugins at once and after that you will kind of get some other screen or something first thing that you have to do is you have you will see one notice at top once you activate all these plugins and this is for wishlist plugin setup click on this button run the setup wizard and this will set up this plugin and a new wishlist page for you so that people you can see this wishlist icon and you can also see the wishlist page so click on let's go to start the setup now first of all this will create a new page for you so whatever you want your page name to be by default it is default wishlist i want to change this thing to my wishlist okay so that people your customers can see the my wishlist page now click on continue now where do you want your add to wishlist button displayed in the single page in the single product page so if you open a single product page we want it after the button after the add to cart button so here as you can see after add to cart button this is the default one so we want this one now click on continue then processing will be automatic and people can share their wish list on different social media platform okay so if you go to this option first let me return to wordpress dashboard once it is completed if you go to this wishlist page your customers can share their wishlist product in different social media platforms as you can see over here now let's click on this screen option and let's also disable the elementor widget from here now if you click on this pages option from the left hand side you will see a lot of pages will be created for you earlier we had only sample page and maybe the privacy policy page now we also have the wishlist page because we just set up this thing and with that we also have few more plugins like cart plugin checkout plugin my account and shop plugin oh uh, sorry my account and shop pages these pages these pages are because of the woocommerce plugin and now it is time to set up woocommerce now to set up woocommerce you have to hover over woocommerce from the left hand side and click on settings first thing you have to do the basic setup so your address and all those things enter your address it could be your you know basic your office address your home address your manufacturing hub address factory address whatever it could be then enter your city name and after that your country name and your state name and obviously your postal code or your pin code now to which all countries you will be selling to so if you want to sell to all countries you can leave it at default if you want to sell to specific countries which is the you know most uh, most of you people will be using this option i want to sell in only india or maybe if you want to sell in multiple countries maybe in india and also maybe in USA so you can select India USA and few more countries if you want now shipping location will be shipped to all countries you sell to if you want to enable taxes and calculations on your website you can tick mark this thing now it's time for currency which currency do you want to use by default it is US dollar if you want to make it Indian rupee you can search for Indian rupee on a Bangladeshi currency whatever current country or whatever currency you want you can search for that okay then after that click on save changes again now the next tab under WooCommerce is the products tab. Under this, first of all, make sure under shop page your shop is selected. Then after that, whatever default weight unit you want. Now this depends on the product. So if you are selling, if you are planning to sell bulky products, then you can go with kilogram. And in your country, if it is pounds or you know all these things, you can go with that dimension, with that weight unit and dimension unit. Now I'll be selling lightweight products like t-shirts and all. So instead of kilogram, I'll select gram and dimension unit i'll select centimeter instead of meter or some other option then after that again click on save changes now you can go to tax and now we can set up taxes 
Now by default two tax class will be automatically created for you reduced rate and zero rate. You can create few more. Now if you want you can create one tax rate or you can even create multiple tax rates. For example let's create two tax rates. In, in, in our country in India it is called GST. If it is in your country it is called VAT you can type in VAT. I'm adding two options GST 10% and GST 12%. Maybe I'm selling you know, many type of products. Some products uh, some products have 10% tax on them. Some have 12% tax on them. So I can create two classes. If you want you can even create more tax classes. Now click on save changes. Now once you do this thing you will see new options are created for you. If you see at top these two options are created for you GST 10% rates and GST 12% rates. First click on GST 10% rates and let's set up this thing. Now to set up this thing click on insert row. Under country code type in your country code. For India it is IN, for Bangladesh BG, for US it is US, for UK it is UK, for Pakistan I think it is PK so so on. For India it is IN so I will type in this thing. Under rate because it is 10% I will type in 10. GST name or tax name will be GST 10%. So that this, this name will be displayed to your customer while they do the checkout or on the you know, cart page. So you have to type in that thing. Then you can untick shipping and click on save changes. And just like this you have set up your first GST rate. Now click on GST 12%. Same thing click on insert row. Enter your country code. Under rate it will be 12. Tax name will be GST 12 percentage. And just untick shipping and click on save changes. This is also done. Now it's time for shipping. Now shipping it could be different thing. For example if you see under general I have said that I am selling in two countries. India and USA. So I'll have to set up two different shipping options because obviously shipping because I'm from India for me shipping and delivering products in India is pretty easy but to deliver a product or ship a product to some other country for example in this case USA it is very difficult. It is very expensive also and quite difficult as compared to shipping in your own country. So for this you have to create different shipping zones and you can set different rates for those shipping zones. Now what I'll do is I'll create two different shipping zones. So even if you're selling or even if you're shipping in your own country, you know, rates can vary. For example, if you're from this, if, if the person is purchasing from the same state, for example, I am here in Mumbai, uh, which is in Maharashtra state, which is a state in India. Now if a customer is purchasing some product from Maharashtra state, for me, shipping this product is quite cheaper, okay, quite inexpensive. But if a person or a customer is purchasing from some other state, maybe Jammu and Kashmir, now distance between Jammu and Kashmir and Maharashtra is very long and a lot of things happen. So what I can do is I can set up a different shipping rate for my home state and other shipping rates for other states. Let me show you how that is done. And even after that we can do some more classes. First let's do this basic classing, basic zone setup and after that we can see how to create different classes for different types of products. So first of all click on add shipping zone. Let's create with the simplest one Maharashtra which is my home state. Okay. And under zone region, I'll search for Maharashtra. You'll see this region. Click on save changes. Now let's add whatever rate you want. Click on add shipping method. Flat rate. Click on add shipping method. Now click on edit. Now under this cost, I have, I have set the currency US dollar. So maybe I want to charge $1 for shipping price. Okay, so I can type in this thing and click on save changes. But if you do this thing, there will be one problem. If a person, for example, is purchasing some product. Maybe if a person is purchasing this black coat. If they purchase one product, it, they will be charged like $1 per product shipping. If the same person purchases this product maybe in 10 quantity, 10 different codes, still the charge of shipping will be 1. So to fix this thing, you can enter a simple formula. Type in 1.00, give a space, asterisk, space and under square brackets type in QTY. Now this will make it $1 into the quantity or if you are setting 60 rupees for example, 60 rupees into whatever the quantities. If a person is purchasing three products, 60 into three. Three products, one into three. Okay, something like that. So one dollar into whatever the quantities. Select this thing and click on save changes. Now there is still one problem over here. And that is that if you're selling different types of products. For example, if I'm selling t-shirts, but with that I'm also selling refrigerators. Now obviously shipping a t-shirt is pretty easy. But shipping a refrigerator is very difficult and also very expensive. So we cannot have a same, we cannot have same rate for different types of products. So for that we can do one thing, we can go to shipping classes and we can create different classes over here. So click on add shipping class. First let's create a t-shirt class. 
just click on save shipping classes now let's let's create another class maybe this is for televisions so i'll type in tvs let's create another one this is maybe for refrigerator and similarly you can go ahead and create mobile phone whatever you want now click on save shipping classes again if you go back to shipping zones and if you edit this maharashtra shipping zone that we are working on edit the flat rate now as you can see we have a, we have a lot more new options refrigerators tvs and so on now earlier we had entered this formula under cost now delete this formula or cut this formula from cost because we don't want anything under cost and paste in this formula under no shipping class basically the default now this will be the default price if you don't set up any if you don't select any shipping class this will be the default rate one dollar now we can do one thing for refrigerator maybe i want ten dollars ten dollars into quantity for t-shirt one dollar is fine for televisions we want maybe five dollars per quantity so here as you can see now this is fixed click on save changes now this is for maharashtra for other states we have to create a new zone come back to shipping zones click on add shipping zone and let let me just name it rest of india i don't want to do it state by state that will take a lot of time rest of india now i'll select all the other states in india so i'll search for india and now i'll select all the other states okay so i've selected all the other states except for maharashtra so i'll select this thing click on save changes first of all now click on add shipping method again flat rate add shipping method edit this thing and now similarly do the same thing now the default price for other states will be maybe 1.5 okay so i'll type in 1.50 copy this thing for refrigerator maybe 15 dollars for maharashtra it was 10 so out of maharashtra maybe i want to increase the pricing then 15.00 just to be sure then after that we have t-shirt it will be like 1.5 is fine television maybe not 15 but 10 dollars per quantity outside maharashtra now click on save changes so this is how you can do it you can do one more thing you can add another shipping rate and you can type in free shipping so if somebody purchases uh some product you know, for example let me show you if i edit this thing i can type in some condition over here minimum order amount so if a person purchases more than uh, if a person purchases goods worth more than 100 dollars you can give them free shipping okay click on save changes you can do the same thing for maharashtra as well let's add one more shipping method free shipping you can also add local pickup if you want and again minimum order amount hundred dollars or you can increase or decrease this amount so this is how you can do shipping you can go even in more details you can do one thing there is another video on my youtube channel if you go to my youtube channel now if you just search for this is my youtube channel you can go you can subscribe if you have not already subscribed because you have a lot of videos coming as you can see free multi-vendor website uh, how to create a professional website membership website multi-vendor digital product website classified website job search website you know cura type of q a website a lot of websites appointment website you know business listing directory website so if you want to learn how to create those websites make sure to subscribe now you can go to YouTube and search for Nayesh Sheikh Advanced Shipping or Advanced Shipping. You will get that video. Now you can watch this video, WooCommerce Advanced Shipping. In that I have covered shipping in more detail, like a lot detail. Like shipping based on weight, shipping based on, you know, dimension. A lot of things are covered in that video. Also free shipping based on multiple conditions. We have just added one condition that is the minimum order amount. You can add multiple layer of conditions and so on. So if you want, you can watch that video. If you want to do more, if you want to learn shipping in more advanced and details. Now let's set up payments so that people get these options to make the payment. First of all, if you want to enable cash on delivery, you can enable this thing and click on save changes. Now to enable payment, we need different plugins. So go back to plugins. And again, for all the plugins, I would recommend you to select everything and enable auto updates. So you can just, you know, do it like this as well. So that whenever there is a new update available, these plugins will be updated automatically. Now click on add new. You have to search for those plugins. Now here it all depends on what all payment gateways are available and accepted in your country. For example, in India, there are like hundreds of different payment gateways available. Razorpay, CC Avenue, Paytm, PayUmoney, Instamojo, many different payment gateways are available. Similarly, I'm sure in some other countries as well, many different payment gateways are available as well. And there are few few payment gateways which are available in multiple countries. For example, PayPal is available like everywhere almost. Then Stripe is available in most of the developed countries and so on. And I'm sure for Africa, for Pakistan, Bangladesh, 
for Asia, for you know Europe, for all the other countries, there are many different payment gateways. So you just have to do a simple Google search to find out which payment gateway is available in your country and which is the best one, which offers the you know which offers the cheapest option and so on. In this example, I'll be using three payment gateways because I know uh, my videos are watched by almost every country in this world. So I have to be you know I have to be helpful to all of you. So first of all, we'll search for PayPal now which is available in most of the countries so we'll set we'll see and set up how to use paypal now you have to use this plugin woocommerce paypal checkout payment gateway by woocommerce install this one so this plugin will help you to accept paypal payments on your website so people can pay, pay through paypal to purchase a new product now the next plugin that we want is this stripe plugin now the next plugin that we want is this stripe payment gateway so search for stripe and you can select this one WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway. Okay, this is also by WooCommerce. Now this is the this is the best plugin I think best payment gateway because it is very easy to set up and also with that you know you can accept online payments you can accept direct debit and credit card payments right on your website. So very good and this is available mostly in Europe in US and most of the other countries in, in India also this is accepted now. Then the next plugin that I want is Razorpay. Now Razorpay is the most popular plugin, most popular payment gateway in India. So we are using this one, Razorpay for WooCommerce, not the Razorpay quick payment, Razorpay for WooCommerce. Now once you install all these plugins again, come back to plugins, click on left hand side plugins and now we can activate all these three, tick mark these three, go to bulk action and activate all of them. And again for these also you can just go ahead and you can enable auto updates if you want. Now once you do that again, if you go back to WooCommerce settings, you will see a lot of options under payments. Click on payments and now as you can see, we have Razorpay, Paytm, uh, we have Razorpay, PayPal and Stripe. Three three options that we enable. You, you have a lot of options under Stripe, Alipay, you can enable Alipay through Stripe, you can enable Giro Pay or whatever you want. Now click on save changes. First of all, let's set up PayPal, which is the most easiest one. So click on PayPal checkout. Now to accept PayPal payments on your website, you need the live API username, password and signature. And you'll get this thing, to get this thing, go to paypal.com. And for this, you can use any type of PayPal account, whether you know it's a regular PayPal account or a business PayPal account, any kind of account can be used with this. Now once you log into your account, you can do one thing under your URL bar, after PayPal, type in this thing, paypal.com slash business manage slash credentials slash API access. And you can see A in access is capital. So whatever you see on your screen, type in this thing and press enter. Now you'll land on this page. Here you have to scroll down and you have to search for this option NVP slash SOAP API integration. Now click on manage API credentials and here you'll get all your credentials, required credentials. First of all, you have to select this one API username, click on show. It will display and it will show you your username. Copy this thing, come over here, paste it under username. Similarly, click on show, copy your password, paste it under password, copy your signature, paste it under signature. Obviously, I'll have to hide these things. Okay, so as you can see, I have copied and pasted all three details. Now I can just go ahead at the bottom and we can click on save changes. Now, if you want, you can do some more settings over here. For example, uh, what buttons you want, all these things, what type of button you want uh, and where do you want to display these buttons? You, you can enable all those options. For example, I don't want to display the checkout button on the single product page. If you want, you can display that thing. So basically what will happen is on every single page, it will display buy with PayPal. So that is kind of good or kind of bad uh, depend on how you see it. So for example, the advantage of that button is that people can just click on one single button and they can purchase the product through PayPal if they already have a PayPal account. So they don't have to go to the cart page checkout page that simplifies the process. So if you want that thing, you can have that thing. Now click on save changes. Now again, let's come back to payments and now let's set up Stripe. So click on Stripe. This is even more easier. Now they have made it more easier with this. You can just uh, create or connect an account. So just click on this button. Now this will uh, open the dashboard page. Make sure first of all, you have an account with PayPal and Stripe if you want to use this thing. Now, as you can see, this will open Stripe.com for you. You just have to log into your Stripe account. I've already logged into my Stripe account with this email. You just have to click on connect. So this will connect Stripe with your account. You don't have to enter any keys or anything. This will automatically connect it and it will return you back to your WordPress website. And now as you can see, this is enabled. You have to go at the bottom now, click on save changes. 
then after that again you can do one thing you can click on payment settings and I don't want this button again this will add a button I don't want this button on product page and cart page you can just click on save changes now if this single thing does not work for you you can click on this option for example if this button connect button does not work for you you can go to settings click on edit account keys delete these keys from here after you delete this thing you have to go to stripe account you have to go to your dashboard which is dashboard.stripe.com now once you log into your account or sign into your account you will see this button or this link developers link click on that now click on api keys from the left hand side here you have this thing and here you'll get your api key so publishable key copy it from here just click on that it will be copied paste it under live publishable key copy your secret key and obviously come over here paste it under live secret key and click on save live keys okay so if, if that button does not work for you and also you can copy this link paste it under that this web secret link okay these three links this link is also already given to you so just copy and paste it over here now again come back to payments finally let's see how we can set up razor pay so click on razor pay first of all for this we need the key id and key secret and for this you have to go to this website dashboard.razorpay.com steps are very similar to stripe in fact this whole payment gateway is very similar to stripe now log into your account again i am saying first of all you must have an account only after that you can log in now here once you log into your account you will see at the left hand side settings click on that and under settings click on api keys if you're doing this for the first time you will see a button which would say generate live key click on that button once you click on that button you will download an excel file and let me show you what you how that excel file will look like so that excel file will look something like this you have to open this thing here you'll have your key id and key secret just copy your key id come over here paste it under key id and after that copy your key secret and paste it over here after that just click on save changes now these are all dummy keys don't try it don't waste your time okay so these are just dummy keys now and this is how you can set up all the three payment gateways obviously if you want to use some other payment gateways you can do that now go to accounts and privacy now here we have to do a few settings first of all we want to allow our customers to log in to an existing account during checkout so while they are doing checkout if if they if they already have an account they can just log in okay we also want to allow our customers to create an account during checkout so while checkout they can create a new account just enter the details in the checkout and after that they will get one option that if you want you can create a new account with these details we also want to allow customers to create an account on the my account page and we want to untick these two things so basically if these two things are ticked mark your uh, you know username and password will be automatically generated for your customers which we don't want very bad option so we want to untick both the option we want our customers to have their own username and password okay so go ahead at the bottom and click on save changes now finally go to advanced and just make sure under cart page cart is selected under checkout page checkout and under my account page my account is selected once you see this thing click on save changes and with this you have successfully completed all your woocommerce settings right so now let's see how we can create different products so to create a new product you'll have to click on this products option at the left hand side and click on create product now let me do one thing let's open a single product so that we can see how it looks and we can just copy paste details from this page to our website obviously you don't have to do that you have to enter your own details but this is just for tutorial purposes now this will be the name or title of your product so i'll copy this thing and we'll paste it over here under product name okay over here then after that if you see this is your long description so if you scroll down at the bottom whatever you want to enter this will be your long description so you can just paste in or type in your text whatever you want and over here as i said earlier you can enter text you can enter images if you want let me upload a simple image over here just to show you right now by the way i don't know if i have first of all let me just upload some image so maybe uh, let's upload this one for example or maybe this one we'll upload this image click on insert into product and after that i'll enter some more text and i'll bring this image at left okay just just to show you that you can enter image as well now there is a link given in the video description below if you click on that link you will be redirected to my website now for every single tutorial whenever i create a tutorial for every single tutorial i create a blog post like this one so once you click on that link which is given in the video description you will be redirected to one of the similar videos or similar blog post 
at top you will see the video that you're watching right now then when you scroll down you will see few important links and at the bottom you will see download free images once you click on this download button you will download this zip file you will download a zip file you'll have to basically unzip that file so you can right click on that file and click on extract files it will be unzipped once you unzip that file you will see this media folder and in this folder as you can see you have all the images that you need to create this website okay all the images for categories for icons everything obviously i'll show you how to create your own icons and all these images but this is just given to you so that if you if you just want to use these images if you don't right now have your own images you can just do that now again let's come back to this page scroll down now first of all we are just creating a simple product so this is a simple product now the price is 52 dollars so as you can see 52 dollars now if you want to give some discount like here we are giving some discount 52 is striked out and the regular price is 50 so you can enter the sale price 50 and you can also schedule this thing so maybe this is available only from today till the end of next month okay maybe for 30 days for example now whether this product is taxable or not if it is taxable then what is the tax class so maybe 10 percent gst is applied so i'll type in gst 10 percent then under inventory you can type in some sku which is stock keeping unit basically some unique code given to each product so maybe i'll type in ts000401 okay and after that you have to enter shipping details like what is the weight of the product what is the dimension length weight height okay all this thing and what is the shipping class what shipping class should be charged for this product refrigerator shipping class tv or what obviously we'll select t-shirt then we have the product short description which is this thing copy it paste it over here now in this product short description as well you can use bulleted list you can insert media file all those things you can insert icon if you want in this as well you can do those things just like the long description then at the right hand side we have to give it some category now we are creating maybe for jacket so we'll create a new jackets category okay so whenever in future if you are creating another jacket you can just select this category jackets category then product tags jacket can, could be a tag men could be a tag black color it is so black could be a tag okay so on if there is any video available of this product you can enter the video url bar for example if this is the video you can just right click copy link address and you can paste in that video under this option now product image this image will be the product image and extra images will be this gallery image first we have to enter the main product image so click on set product image and as i said earlier once you unzip that file you can download all these images under products you will see here you have this image okay we'll upload this image click on set product image and let's upload few gallery images as well okay for this this is one gallery image maybe okay let me upload uh, let's see maybe this one as well just to add more images okay so we have two images as our gallery images and with this you have successfully created your first product you can just go ahead and publish it let's see how it is looking if you open this view product link in a new tab this is how your first product is looking as you can see title pricing everything is given people can click on add to cart they can people can click on add to wish list they can add the product in the wish list as you can see they can click on add to cart product added in the cart and so on and long description as you can see images available as i said you additional information weight dimension people can review people can select any star they can leave a review like this so everything is working absolutely fine like this okay now this was a simple product let's see how we can create a variable product so if there is any variation available in the product for example here as you can see green large black medium white large all these things you can create a variable product as well i'll give it a title of short sleeve t-shirt you can again follow the same process click on add new and so on let's see whether we can duplicate yes we can duplicate this product so we will click on duplicate change the product title to short sleeve t-shirt and also make sure remember to change the permalink click on edit uh, the permalink says the link says black fashion we don't want this we want short sleeve t-shirt click on ok okay if you anytime whenever you duplicate a product always make sure to also change the permalink now similarly you can add you can add description long description short description and so on now for the variable product instead of product data simple you have to select variable now tax class and everything will be same inventory we can change this thing 002 shipping you can change the details if you want shipping class and all 
Now the main difference over here is this attributes option. Okay, before we go and see the attributes option, let's see all the other things. So here also you can add some tags. This is not a jacket, so I'll remove the jacket tag. Uh, black color is available, so maybe we can keep the black tag. Green is also available, so we'll add a new tag of green. And short sleeves or fashion could be a new tag, okay, so on. Then after that, let's remove the, this image. This is not a jacket, so let's remove these images. Click on set featured uh, product image and let's add new images for this. So we want this white image. Okay, then we want the red one and maybe green one. Okay, these three colors white, red and green. And for the main image, for the main image, maybe we want this white image. Click on set product image. For gallery images, we want these two images as well. Okay, now click on publish. Right now, it is just a regular product. First, we will have to add different attributes. Only after that, we can create this variable product. Now to add an attribute, you have to see this option under products. You will see attributes. Open that in a new tab. And over here, first of all, Color could be an attribute. So we'll add color attribute. Now select color and under type, make sure color is selected. Okay, name will be color, type will be color. And after that, just click on add attribute. If you want, you can also enable archives. Another attribute could be size. So type in size. Under type, you can type in, you can select a button for this. Enable archives, click on add attribute. And similarly, other things could also be attributes. So you can select those things as well. Now under colors, click on configure terms and add different colors. For example, red. Now go to color, add the red color, click on add new color. Let's add black, select the black color, click on add new color. Let's add maybe blue, add the blue color, add new color. Let's add green. Okay, so whatever color and obviously if you don't want the exact this green color, if you want some other green color, you can just search for that. You can find the exact color code and you can click on add new color. Let's add white as well. And so on, you can just go ahead and add as many colors as you want. Now click on add new color. Now, once you do this thing again, come back to attributes and now let's see the size. So under size, click on configure terms. Let's keep it small. Press enter to add a new medium large. And obviously instead of small, medium, large, if you want to use S, M, XSL, all those things, you can use that thing as well. Once you do this thing, again, come back to this page first, refresh it, scroll down. Uh, I want so now here, click on attributes. Now what all attributes are available? Maybe this is available in multiple colors. So I'll select color, click on add. If you want, you can also add different things. For example, first, let's see which all color it is available in. So white, green and red. So we'll select red, white and green. Now always make sure to tick mark this thing used for variation. Click on save attributes. Maybe it is also available in multiple sizes. So you can select this size and maybe it is available in a uh, medium and large size. And again, tick mark this thing used for variation. Now once you do this thing, you have to now go to variation, select this drop down and click on this option, create variations from all attributes and click on go. Now this will create six variations, three colors and two, you know, sizes. So three into two, six variations. Click on OK. Now first we have to set options for green large. First of all, whenever somebody selects green, for example, whenever somebody se selects green, I want the image to automatically change and the pricing also to change. For example, here it is, as you can see, green large 55. If somebody selects green medium, it will be 45. If somebody selects black, image changes, price changes and so on. So green large, first of all, let's select the green image and earlier, what was the price? It was 50. So let me increase the price. So maybe for this, I'll type in $120 for green large. For green medium, I uh, will select $110. Okay. For green, uh, for red large, first of all, let's select this red image. Maybe it is 150 for red medium. Uh, let's select. 145 okay white large for white i'll maybe type in 130 and for white medium some other number all right maybe 120 and for these you can change some dimension and so on okay so this is the main difference between simple product and variable product now you can just go ahead and update it if you open this product in a new tab let's see how it looks 
here as you can see this is how it will look like everything will be same if you select green large image will change price changes to 120 medium price changes to 110 red medium 145 red large 150 and obviously image also automatically changes and so on with a white and so on okay so this is how it works and when somebody adds this uh, in in the cart you will get the exact product like what people ordered whether they ordered white li or large white medium and so on you will get that detail when somebody orders this product so this is how a variable product is created now let's again come back to products let me show you two more products okay so let me again duplicate this a black jacket now let me show you an external product or an affiliate product maybe if you want to do affiliate marketing if there is some product available on Amazon and if you want to link that product let's see how we can do that so first of all let's select some title maybe working boy t-shirt okay and again whenever you duplicate a product always make sure to change the permalink so description title everything can be changed this is a simple product maybe price is just $25 okay and available on discount for $20 taxes and everything you can manage it from here all right SKU tax everything can be managed from here for image let me delete and remove these images I'll explain you the main difference between these products first let's maybe let's select this maybe let's select these images okay maybe I want to select this red one okay and the main difference over here for external product is you have to change the type to external or affiliate product and now you have to enter the product URL so you'll go to your Amazon and you will get the link okay with your affiliate code and everything and you'll enter that link over here okay I don't want to do that thing I'll just enter my website link and when somebody clicks on button text I want to type in buy from Amazon so button will say buy from Amazon when somebody clicks on that button they will be redirected to this Amazon link with your affiliate code okay so this is the main difference this is your affiliate product so this is the only difference just publish it let's see how it looks as you can see button says buy from Amazon once you click on that thing you will be redirected to that link whatever link you have set so this is your affiliate product or your external product again come back to products now if you want you can also create a digital product let me just use this one duplicate this thing external product I'll, uh, digital product for example maybe the, it is a, some book you know self-help book copy the link and replace your permalink now this will be simple product but this will be virtual and downloadable so if it is some mp3 PDF whatever downloadable product you can change the pricing and you can add that file so maybe this is PDF file PDF file okay you'll choose that file you'll upload your PDF go to upload files upload your PDF maybe this is the PDF file you'll select this thing so when somebody purchases this thing they click on download this PDF whatever you have selected will be downloaded we don't want tax over here so we'll remove this thing tax none or if you want tax you can have that thing and change the SKU and so on now for digital product you should always enable sold individually so that you cannot increase or decrease the quantity like here you can increase or decrease the quantity for digital product we don't want that because it is a digital product you just have to copy that product multiple times so you know it is not a physical product so make sure sold individually is selected so that this increase decrease quantity is disabled and rest everything is same I just want to change the image maybe let me upload this image obviously you'll upload the book image but I just wanted to show you that this is how it is done okay we did not change categories add a new category books untick jackets and publish it okay and let's also actually delete these things and self-help this will be one tag and book will be another tag and so on update this page now if you open this link in a new tab let's see how it looks this is how it will look like now as you can see that increase decrease quantity is gone add to cart and you cannot add more than one if you click on this thing this is added in, in your cart if you try to add this again okay as you can see quantity will not increase so very important all right so with this we have seen all the different types of products simple variable digital external affiliate all the products we have seen and with this all the technical part is completed now only the designing part is left we have seen how to set up payments we have seen how to set up WooCommerce 
all the pages, everything is, is uh, completed. Only the designing part is left. So let's start designing this website and let's start with the home page. Let's see how we can design this home page. First of all, we'll have to create this page. Now to create a new page, you click on pages from the left hand side. Now click on this add new button. Let's give it a title of home because this is our home page. So cut this thing first. Under title, let's type in home and then let's just publish this page. Now this is just a regular page. We have to set this page as our home page. So for that, we'll have to come back to our dashboard. We have to hover over settings and click on reading. And over here, you can see your home page displays. Select the second one, a static page and under home page, select home. Click on save changes. Again, if you come back to pages, now as you can see, besides home, it says front page. Now this is your front page. You can edit this page. Now to edit this thing, to design this thing, we'll be using Elementor page builder. So you'll see this button at top, edit with Elementor, click on this button. Now, first of all, before we proceed further, before we see how to design this page, first, let me very quickly show you what this Elementor page builder is and how this thing works. Now, if you see the home page or if you see any page on this website or any other website for that sake, you will see all the pages are divided into different sections. So this is your hero section. We have the icon section. We have the category section, feature product section and so on. Now in this page builder, Elementor page builder, first we create a section. Okay. So this section and everything will be designed at the right hand side and at the left hand side, we have different elements. Now entire website that you see over here, this page, home page and uh, all the other page, everything is created using these elements at the left hand side. Now to create a new section, you click on this plus button and you select how many columns you want. So if you see the first option, first section, we have two columns at the left hand side, we have these things and at the right hand side, we have this image. So we select two columns, for example. Now, if you select any column or if you add any element, you will see at the left hand side settings change. Now it says edit section. If you again want to go back to elements, you have to click on this nine dots icon. Then after that, you will again come back to this thing. Now, suppose you, I want to display button over here so I can drag and drop the button. You don't have to click it or anything. Just drag and drop it like this. You have your button. There is some default style already present. Now you can design it yourself if you want. Now, first of all, for every single element, you will see three options, content, style and advanced. Under content, you will just change the regular content like the text, you know, type and all. Under style, you will change the styling, for example, background color. If you want multiple, you know, different types of color, for example, gradient color, whatever color you want, you can change that thing as well. Basically all this styling thing. And under advanced, you will change the advanced thing, motion effect, transform, responsive positioning and so on. Now, if you again want to come back to the elements, click on the nine dots icon. Now, suppose I want to use maybe icon this time so I can drag and drop the icon at the right hand side. Now, again, under content, maybe I want this icon. So I'll select this thing. We have the same three options, content, style and advanced. Under content, we change the icon. You can do some more things. You can change the alignment and view. So this is the default view. If you want, you can make it stacked. You can make it frame. You can change the size and everything. So this is the content. You can change the styling, size, padding, color, all those things. And under advanced, you will do the advanced thing. So this is how this thing works. I'll cut this thing. Now let's start creating this website. Now for this, we'll add a new section and we'll divide this into two columns. Now at the left hand side, the very first thing that we want is this text top sale on this week or whatever text you want. So for that, we'll go back to elements, click on nine dots icon and search for heading. Okay. Drag and drop this heading element. Type in whatever you want. I'm typing in top sale on this month. Now it's time to design this thing. So for that, go to style. First of all, the color. If you see, we have this color. Let me see the color code. This is the color code 6001 D3. So I'll copy the color code, paste it over here under text color. You can do one more thing. You can save the color code because we'll be using this color code a lot. So we can do one thing. We can simply save the color code so that we don't have to copy paste the color code again and again. So to save the color, you can click on this plus button and you can type in purple, for example. Okay. This is our purple color. Now typography. Now this font family that we're using, this is Poppins. So font family instead of Roboto, Roboto is the default one. We want to change this thing to Poppins. So click on Roboto. You will get a list of font families. Under this thing, you have to search for Poppins. Now let's decrease the size to 14. And if you want to make it bolder, you can change that thing as well. Now I want to do one thing. I want to increase a little bit letter spacing. So spacing between each letter, you'll see that option over here, letter spacing. If I type in one, you can see spacing increase. If I type in hundred, as you can see, or maybe 10 
spacing is increased furthermore. I'll type in maybe 1 or if you want you can type in 0 0.5 okay. Then after that we have some more options we don't want to play around with that for now. Now let's select this second text. Copy it. Come over here again drag and drop another heading. Paste in your text whatever it is. Go to style and for this we have this black color. Let me see the exact color code. Alright so we have this color. I'll again copy the color code and paste it over here and save this color code as well. This is 081420. I'll add this color in my global color and name it black so that again next time we don't have to copy paste the code. Now this one, this font family as you can see is very different. The name of this font family is Domini. So if you open this one, search for Domini, this is the one selected. And obviously the size of this one will be much bigger so we'll increase the size to 50. And this time we have to increase the space between each line. So you'll see this line height option. By default it is pixels, px, we have to change this thing to em and type in 1.5. Now as you can see we have a nice amount of space between each line. And then we have the button. First let's add the button, shop now button. So first of all search for button, drag and drop this button over here. Now the text over here says shop now. So I'll just type in shop now. Okay, now when somebody clicks on this button, I want them to be redirected to my shop page. So under link, I'll type in shop, it will automatically give me all the links. Now I'll use the first one shop page. Now as you can see, you already have your shop page link. Now let's style this thing. So again, come back over here. First of all, the typography font family and so on. So for this also, we'll be using Poppins font family. So our primary and secondary font family will be Poppins and Domini. So these are the two font families that we'll be using throughout the website to maintain consistency throughout the website, okay? Increase the size to 18 and let's change the padding so that we can make it a little bit bigger, nice space and everything. So you can do one thing, delete the padding first, unlink the padding so that everything becomes zero. And now you can do one thing for top and bottom, you can set this thing to 18 and left and right, you can make it 40. Now we have a nice big button. Background color is this color, but when you hover over this thing, it becomes darker. Okay, as you can see. So let's see how we can do that. So background type, select this color. Now this time we don't have to enter the color code because we have already saved the color. So you can click on this globe icon and now as you can see, we have this purple color that we saved. And what I want is when somebody hovers over this thing, for example, when they bring their mouse cursor on top of this button, I want the color to become even darker. So we'll go to hover, select the same color, but make it darker. So select a little bit darker version of this. And now as you can see, when you hover over this thing, it becomes darker. Then we have the second button. Now we can do one thing, we can simply copy this button or duplicate this button to save some time, you know, to save some time in designing. So I'll right click on this button and click on duplicate. Now for the second button, title says learn more. So I'll type in learn more. And when somebody clicks on this thing, I want them to be redirected to my about page, which I've not yet created. But once I create that page, you can add that link. Now styling. The background color is this pink color. So let me get this pink color code. So this is the color code FD346E. Now for this also, I'll add the color code over here and save it. Okay. So click on this plus button and I'll name it pink or whatever you want. Okay. And when you hover over this thing again, same pink color, but like, but darker. Okay. Like this. Maybe too much dark, not this much. All right, so maybe something like this. Now we want to do one thing. We, we don't want them up and down. We want them side by side. So for that, we have to change some options. So first select the first button, go to advanced and change the positioning. Select positioning with and under with make it in line. Do the same thing for the second one. Click on this second button, go to advanced and positioning, make it in line. Okay, now as you can see, they have side by side. Now they are side by side, but we want some space between. So what we can do is we can select the first button, uh, disable or first de-link the margin and only at right type in 10 pixels. Okay, now we have nice amount of space. Now we can update this thing. Whenever you do any changes on your website, make sure to always update the page so that the changes are saved. Then we have this image in the background. Now let me show you how you can create your own image. If you just want, you can use the image that I've given you. 
So here as you can see, I've given you this image. If you open this thing, this is the image that is given to you. If you want, you can just use this image or if you want to create your own image, let me show you how you can do that for free. So to do that, go to canva.com. And this is the website that I use. As you can see, I have designed this image like this. So if you also want to design this thing, you can come over here, click on create a design or first of all, select a custom size. And in this case, I want to select 1920 by 500 or 600 or 800, whatever height you want. Width will be 1920 and whatever height you want. In this case, I'm selecting 800. You can select 500 uh, or 800, whatever you want. Here we are just using 500, but I just wanted to show you that you can do this thing as well. Now, first of all, we want a background color. Let's see what this background color is. So this color is F0, F0, F3. So instead of white background color, I want to change this thing. Let's select some other color. This is very dark, so not this much. Type in this thing, F0, F0, F3, this color. Okay, now we have changed the background color. Once you change the background color, we need these options. Okay, this gradient and this is the one that I'm using over here. For that, you can search for shapes or you, if you first go to elements and if you want, you can search for gradients, if you, you can search for shapes and so on. What I'll do is I'll go to, you'll already see this option gradient. If you don't see that option, just under under this search bar, type in gradient and you'll get all the different gra gradients. As you can see, whatever, whichever you want, you can use them. Now, the one that I'm using is this one. I'll open this. If you see, this is the one that we are using at top left corner. Now, I've done one thing. I've just rotated this a little bit like this easily and then brought it over here like this. You can see same thing. Now for the second one, which is given at the right hand side, this big one, let's scroll down. Let me show you that thing as well. Now I'm just doing what I'm just doing the settings that I'm, uh, that I've done on my website. You don't have to follow the same steps and all you can create, you can select any other shape you want. Now this is the second thing that I've selected and let me increase the size of this one as well. Let's see. Okay. This is how it is. Rotate this one as well. And now I'll increase the size. Okay. Maybe even bigger. All right. Okay, so this is the, this much maybe. All right. Or what, however, or whatever you want. Then we also have some Im image over here at the left hand side, bottom left. So for that, you can search for this. You can search for something else. If you want to add any underline, you can use this small underline like this and so on. So many different options are given to you. You have the backgrounds as well. This is for background. If you want this, if you want to use this in the background, you can use this thing as well. So a lot of options are given to you, whatever or whichever you want to use, just use that. Okay. And everything is free. Most of them are free. Some are premium. If you see this crown, crown icon, this is premium. Rest everything is free. Okay. So maybe I want to stop it over here. I don't want to complicate this thing. I just want to stop it over here. All right. So once you're done, you can just click on this download button and download the file. And here, as you can see, this file will be downloaded for you. And now you can use this on your website. So come back, click on this edit section and go to style, select this option under background, classic option under background type and upload that image. Okay. So let's come back. Let me upload this image. Click on open and insert media. Now, as you can see, now there is one more problem over here. You can see the image is stopping over here. Left and right, we have some space. So to fix this thing, we'll fix the image. First, let's fix this space. Come back to layouts and stretch the section. Under stretch section, make it yes. And now as you can see, it is touching both the sides. So whenever you add anything in the background, whether it's color, uh, whether it's image or whatever it is, you should always add, you should always make this section stretch. Now you can give some regular or particular height. So for example, in this case, I can give it a minimum height of 450. Okay, like this. Now I'll go to style, change some option under this thing. Now for the size, I want cover. You can see this is the cover size. If you want, you can also change the positioning top center or if you want center, left, center, center. Okay. All these sizes can be added. So whatever you want, maybe we want to make it default. You can select this option. Then I want to display this image. Okay. This image over here. Now this is a background less image, a transparent image. First of all, let me show you how we can make any image transparent. The easiest way is to use this website, remove.bg. Okay, remove.bg. As you can see, the website itself says remove background. So remove.bg. Whatever image you want to remove the background, you can just select that and upload that image. The great thing about this website is that even if the image is very complicated, this will easily do the work for you. Okay, 
So I don't have any complicated image. Everything is pretty simple. Okay, let's just use this one, which is simple. But even if you have a very complicated image, it will really do a great job. So as you, here, as you can see, this is completed. Now we can download this thing. Now the problem with this website is that they will only give you a small file. If you upload a big, large file, they will give you a very small version of that file. So this is the problem over here. So you know, if you want to use a small file, you can use this website. Or if you want, you can do one thing. You can go to this website, pixlr.com slash e. And over here, you can do this thing. For example, click on open image. And maybe I want to open, we want a jacket. So maybe let's open this image, click on open. Now, if you want to make this image transparent, this is very easy because you know, steps and everything are simple. If you want to make this image uh, transparent, you can click on this wand tool, wand select. Okay. Or maybe not wand select. You can select this option, cut out slash mask. This scissor icon, cut out slash or cut out uh, slash mask, select this option. And under this, you have to select magic mask, select this magic mask and select the background. Just click on the background. As you can see, it will be deleted. Now this is not deleted. So you can click on this, click on this. If you want, you can even zoom in, zoom out to see. For here, as you can see, let's delete this one as well. Here also, this much. So you can use this one. Uh, you can do some more things. There are many more options. We have uh, we have the eraser option and some other options as well. I just wanted to show you that this is a very simple tool that you can use to do this thing. And once you're done, you can just click on File, Save, and make sure to save the PNG option so that it is transparent. Okay. Click on save as and you can save the file. Okay. Click on save. Now this is also saved. So this is how easy it is to do this thing. Now again, come back to this website. Now, first of all, what I, what I want to do is I want to add space in this option, add spacer in the second column, add space. And we want exactly 450 because the size of this thing is also 450. The size that we have set for the row is 450. Once you add the space, click on this section, click on this edit column, go to style and add some background. And I've given you this image as well. If you want to use the same image, you can use this image. Or if you want to use your own image, you can do that. So this is the image that I want to use. I'll select this, click on open. Now click on insert media. And here, as you can see, this image is getting repeated. So you can set the repeat to no repeat. Now, as you can see, image not getting repeated. You can change the position, top right, what top left, center, center. Okay, whatever position you want. I want to keep it at default, which is top center, I guess. That is the default one. So this is how it will look like. If you want, you can update it, hide it, and this is how it will look like. Okay. So this is how you can create a first section. With this, you have successfully created your first section. Let's see how we can create our next section, which is this icon section. So again, come back to this page. Right, so for this, let's add a new row and divide it into three different columns, obviously, because we want three options over here. And for this, we'll be using image box. So search for image box, drag and drop it over here. And this is how it will look like. Now, the very first thing that I want to do is I want to change the global font family so that we don't have to change it again. For example, in this case, also, we'll have to go to style, change the font family to pop ins or dominate and something like that. So we can actually do one thing. First, let's update this page. We can change the global font family. So we don't have to do it again and again. So we can click on this hamburger icon, this three lines icon, click on site settings and select this option typography. Now under typography body will be poppins. So the basic text, the body text will be poppins. So make it poppins and rest. Everything will be, you know, heading rest, everything uh, heading and everything will be domine. So select this option, select domine. All right. Same thing for all the other things. Heading one, two, three, four. Same thing. Okay. So select for this one and select Domine. Heading one, then for heading two as well. Select this option. Obviously, if you don't want to use this font family, if you want to use some other font family, obviously you're free to do that. And you can set the same font family over here. All right. Then after that, finally, the last one, heading six. Okay, select this thing, click on update. Now you can do one more thing. If you want, you can go to uh, global fonts and you can change that thing as well. Now I'll cut this thing, come back to this option. And over here, we want to change the uh, this thing to Domini. And over here, first of all, we want to change the text to 
free shipping and we want to change this thing to on all orders over hundred dollars not 200 because if you remember for the setting we had set this through hundred dollars okay so instead of 200 we'll make it hundred then after that we have to set some image then after that we have to select this icon or this image so this is an image and to get this image we will be using some other option you have to go to another free website search for flat icon go to this website flaticon.com and here as you can see this is the truck icon or van icon so if you search for van or truck you will get this thing just search for van there will be hundreds of different icons available colorful and black and white sketch all this option so this is the one that i've used as you can see click on this thing and you can just go ahead select this thing and download the png version free download this will download this file for you as you can see file is downloaded so similarly you can go ahead and search for some other icons like the support icon money icon all these icons are downloaded all these icons i have downloaded from this website now i already have these icons i'll simply upload them so this is first second and third okay uh, let me first select the van icon now we want image alignment left hand side so select left go to style first let me update this thing let me go to site settings and global fonts let's also change this thing instead of roboto i want the primary font family to be domini secondary let's select this thing this will also be domini then after that we have the text i want text to be poppins all right and accent also we can have poppins all right now click on update so that we don't have to change this thing again now we just need to change the size so click on this thing select this option styling option now spacing by default is 15 make it 30 and you can also change the width okay so by default it is 30 we will make it 25 this is just to change the size of the image okay so image width was 30 we have changed this thing to 25 now select content select first of all select the title and we can do one more thing you can select vertical align you can make it middle so that everything is in middle so icon and everything the image and everything is in middle now typography it is already dominant as you can see we don't have to change this thing change this size to 20 make it a little bit bolder 700 and you can also change the line height so under line height we'll type in 1 em not px em now select the description description will be poppins which obviously it is already poppins because we just set this thing and the rest everything is good just change the line height to 1 rest everything is good like size and weight everything is looking good now we can do one thing we can add this border at the right hand side so this border that we have over here so for that we'll select this option go to advanced select border or maybe let's do one thing let's not put over here let's put a border on the column so select column edit column go to advanced or go to styling for this select border solid only at right so d link and type in one at right and whatever color you want so very light color maybe something like this yeah all right now for this we also need to add some margin so that there is some space between all the three so we'll select this advanced option under column dealing this thing now from top and bottom we don't want to do this thing we want to do it from left and right so 20 pixels from left and right now we can simply do one thing right click copy this thing paste it over here paste it over here then right click on this edit column copy now right click on the second edit column paste style so that you know it paste that margin and this border and everything for the third one we don't want the border so we'll select the edit column we don't want the border so we'll go to style border make it none okay now finally select this section edit section and let's add some spacing from top and bottom so go to advanced and let's add some margin so from top we'll add 30 and bottom we'll add 60 pixels right bottom 60 top 30 now click on update now let's see what we have next next we have this category section or this image section for that again we'll add a new row and we want a single column in this one and under this we'll add inner section okay and this inner section will be divided into three columns so right click on this edit section edit column and click on add new column so the inner column is divided into three different columns now inside this we want to add this image okay so we'll come over here we'll search for this image element drag and drop it over here just the regular image element 
upload any image you want. Now for this also you can download free images, professional images from Unsplash and Pexels. So you can go to Unsplash and Pexels. For example, you want images for sunglasses, okay, with model, with male or female model. You can search for that as you can see. And whatever image you want to use for your category image, you can do that. Okay, like this. So you can see hundreds of different images are available. Whichever you want to use, you can download that thing. Okay. And after that, I've already shown you how to do all the other things. Like you can download it and after that you can make it transparent and then you can use uh, that pixels, pixlr for that. Let's actually do one thing. Let's use some image. Maybe, maybe let's use this one. Okay, download the smallest size, small size. Okay, this is downloaded and then let's make it uh, transparent or maybe let's go to pixlr.com slash e, the advanced one. Let me see the size of this thing. Okay, so the size is 350 by 230. Not 350, let's see what was the size. Yeah, it was 350 by 230. So I want this exact size. I'll click on create new and 350 by 230. Okay, click on create. Now once you have this thing, you can do one thing. First of all, you can add any background color. For example, if you want this color as your background color, I'll co co copy the color code, come over here. Now first let's add a new layer. So click on this plus button and select empty layer. And inside this thing, we want to add this color that we have copied. Okay, so we'll come over here and we'll select this option, fill option and click on this thing. This color will be added. I'll click on this thing. I don't want this red color, so I'll paste in the color code, click on OK. Then cl again click on this thing and now as you can see we have this color. Now let's do one thing, let's bring some image over here. So whatever image you want, again if you want this image, there are many other images, whatever image you want, you can first of all let's go to this remove BG and let's remove the background. So upload the file, select this page, select this uh, file, click on open and this will remove the background. And now as you can see, we have this thing. So this is a pretty big image. We can download this thing. And now let's import the image over here. So add a new layer, click on image and just select this new image, click on open. And after that, it, you can just resize it and you have your image like this, okay? And just like this, you have created a similar option. If you want, you can increase or decrease the size obviously. So this is how these banners are created. You can now go ahead, click on file, save, and you can save the JP, JPEG or PNG, whatever version you want. Click on save as and that file is now saved wherever you want. Let me open that thing. You can see this is how it looks like. So it all depends on you, whatever or however you want, you can download it. So as you can see, so as you can see, this is how it is done. Now I've given you these banners and everything. If you want to use them, you can use them. Let me just upload them. So we'll scroll down and let's upload three from here. Okay, I'll upload these three. Select the first one, click on insert media. We have this banner. Now size will be full. So make sure you always set the size to full. And we have, if you see the corners are rounded a little bit. So we can go to style and change the border radius to maybe 5 or 10, not 10, just 5. Let's hide this thing and now as you can see, this is looking much better. Then you can do one thing, you can select hover and you can add some transition or some hover animation. For example, you can select grow and now as you can see, when you hover this thing, it grows or if you want, you can select uh, push. As you can see, many different options are given to you. Uh, let's select float. This is the one that we're using in the demo website. Then after that, we have the title and whatever you want. So we have the title, which is this t-shirts. So for this, we'll use the heading option. Drag and drop it over here at the bottom. Type in whatever your title is. All right, let's bring it over here. Go to style and change the sizing and everything. So for this, we'll make it 22, 700. Okay, a little bit bolder. Now we want to bring this thing on top of this image. So we'll go to advanced and we'll do some margin thing. So from top, we'll add some negative margin so that this comes at top. So if you type in 100, it will come down, but just before 100 type in minus. So minus 
100 margin top and then at the left hand side 30 pixels so that it comes like this and after that at the bottom we want this view all text but before that let's do one thing i also want to link this thing so we'll go to content and we can link this thing or if you want you can link this entire image if you want you can select this image and you can link this thing to custom url maybe i want to link this thing with the shop page or we have created the jackets page i want to link it with the jackets page or jackets product or category category link is not coming i guess let's go to dashboard let me show you how you can set a category link so if you go to products option under products you will see categories and here as you can see you have the jackets you have the view option right click on view click on copy link address this will give you the link for category of jackets okay now whenever someone clicks on this they will be redirected to that page now the next option is this view all text okay so we'll again use heading element type in view all all right and we don't want to use uh, let's see what we have over here okay so we want to do one thing we want to uh, instead of h2 element we want to use span element okay so this is how it will look like go to style and change this option instead of dominate make it poppins we don't want this thing to be dominate and let's make it 400 now for this also you can go to this option first let's select the text at top i think we need to add more options because this has come down so maybe 130 maybe 160 let's see okay 160 select the second text now go to advanced and for this maybe we can type in 100 or 130 for this like this and after that we can add 30 from left all right so it is just experimenting with this thing whatever works fine for you you can work with this so for top i'm selecting 130 for bottom 80 pixels minus 80 for top okay this is how it will look like if you hide this thing once you hover over this thing it will float and let's see what we have next now similarly you can just go ahead and I, I i'll actually do one thing right click over here duplicate it right click duplicate it and then right click and delete these empty columns now for the second one click on this thing change the image let's select maybe this image and change the text also change the link remember to change the link select the text children wear something like that Okay, view all and the third one also you can go ahead and change this thing as well link and everything can be changed now once you do this thing you can do one thing you can right click and duplicate this inner column only the inner column okay only this much and now you can do one thing similarly from here also you can change this thing now i want to do the one thing i want to select this option second inner column and i want to decrease some margin from top so that the space decreases between these two options okay so maybe minus 50 let's see like this okay this is looking better you can do one more thing if the image sizes are getting different for example this image is a little bit different you can set a particular image size for example come to the first image and under image size full you can select uh, custom and you can set a custom size for example let's select 350 by 230 okay now select the second one do the same thing size custom 350 by 230 apply and now as you can see this is fixed for this also custom 350 by 230 so that you have same size everything looks good select this one also third one and change this thing to custom 350 by 230 click on apply and similarly for other images as well select this thing and uh, select the height custom 350 by 230 apply for this image as well select custom 350 by 230 apply okay so it you will get a you know similar size throughout and maybe instead of minus 50 let's make it minus 30 okay maybe in minus 40 okay so that we have you know similar amount of space between each or element between each option okay so this is how this section is created and finally at the bottom we want some more space so we'll select the row main row and let's add some spacing at bottom margin at bottom maybe 50 pixels margin additional at bottom then after that you can click on update and now we have the next section which is this featured product section for that add a new row single row single column 
first we have the text copy the text and now here you can do actually one thing you can copy this text and everything from top because we are using a similar style paste it over here and instead of this color first we bring it in center instead of this color we can change this thing to the black color that we have saved okay and then we have the second text which says featured products first let's again copy this second heading paste it over here and title says featured products okay center color is this pink color so go to style select text color pink okay and finally we have some description so we'll copy it come over here and for this we'll use this simple text editor bring this text editor type in whatever you want bring it in center and you can change the text color if you want and after that you can go to advanced and you can add some margin percentage okay add 20 percentage from left and right like this and finally at the bottom we want to display these products so for that we'll actually search for short code element bring it over here at the bottom and what we'll do is we'll we'll first update the page open a new tab and search for woocommerce short codes you will see the first link woocommerce.com slash document short codes open this link and here you will see all the short codes if you scroll down as you can see for all the different pages and so on we want to display products so for products you will see at the bottom if you want to display random sale item this is the short code if you want to display featured products this is the short code so we do want to display featured products copy the short code come over here paste it under the short code now we want to limit eight we want to display eight products and four columns click on update right now it is not displaying any products because we have not yet set any product as a featured product so to do that thing we'll have to go to dashboard click on products to make any product as a featured product you'll have to click on this star icon click on star these products will become your featured products like this now again if you come back and refresh this page scroll down and now as you can see these four products are now displayed you can see this is working and obviously it is displaying only four once we have more products it will display more Alright, so now let's finally do one thing let's select the section edit section and let's add some padding at top and bottom or if you want you can add margin at top and bottom so in this case we'll add margin at bottom 60 pixels at top we already have this space so only at bottom maybe 60 or 90 pixels okay like this maybe let's add 90 pixels at bottom 60 or 90 pixels like this now click on update then we have our next section or oh, before that we have this thing we have the you know shop page thing you can copy this thing paste it over here below this thing and instead of first make it center and after that change the positioning instead of inline make it default now shop now you can redirect this to any other page and below this thing also we need some space okay if you want let's first publish it let's see how it is looking right now how our website is looking till now so we already have some space at bottom now after this we have this testimonial section let's see how we can create this section now for this again add a new row and inside this row we want to add another row which is this inner section and this will be divided into two columns okay like it is over here now first of all we want to do one thing we want to copy title and everything from top because we have a very similar design so we'll copy this thing paste it over here copy the second thing again paste it over here and then finally we'll copy this and paste it under this option now we'll make everything left first the title says testimonial so we'll type in this thing make it left this says what our client says so we'll change this thing make it left and we'll also increase the size a little bit so instead of 50 we'll make it 60 and instead of 1.5 we'll make it 1.2 then finally we have this thing we don't want left and right anything we can just make it zero like this all right and we will make it left align then after that you can select this option select edit column and add border at the right hand side okay so select a solid border right one and whatever color you want so maybe some lighter color like this one all right then we have this thing at the right hand side we have this 4.1 a uh, 4.8 text so we'll use the heading for this type in 4.8 go to style change this thing to poppins 
and after that we'll increase the size to 200 pixels and we'll make it bolder at 700 and after that you can do one more thing we'll make it center align like this we have center align over here so we'll make this thing also center align and you can do one thing you can increase or decrease the margin and everything so for this we'll decrease the margin at bottom now the reason i'm doing is because i want this star to touch this thing so we want some negative margin at bottom so at bottom type in minus 65 now below this thing we want to add our star rating so drag and drop this thing and whatever rating you want so maybe we want 4.8 okay font awesome or whatever you want you can select this thing we want this thing in center now whatever size you want so for this we want 40 pixels and you can change the color as well height and size you can control this thing i want to change the color to maybe let's see this one okay i'll copy the color code paste it under unmarked color as well and let's see what we have next then we have the text average customer rating we'll bring the heading at the very bottom let's bring it over here and change the text again bring it in center and change the sizing and everything first let's make it pop in so we don't want this dominate for this decrease the size to 30 and make it bolder at 700 now finally you can select this row this inner row and let's add margin of 60 at bottom all right then after that let's do one thing let's add another inner row all right so let's add another inner row below this thing like this and we want to divide this into three columns okay add new column and we want this option over here first of all let's bring the testimonial search for testimonial element bring it over here the text says this then after that this is the name john kim designer all right and whatever the images so let's upload some image so for this we'll upload this image maybe select this click on open and click on insert media now let's do one thing let's make everything left aligned so select left align and let's change the styling so go to style first let's select the image now increase the image size to 111 and let's add some border of 1 pixels from all sides you can you can change the border color and so on now the main designing is this border radius because as you can see this shape looks very unique so for this we'll make the border radius 0 first of all from top we'll add 30 from right we'll make it 9 bottom 60 and left 30 so this will give you this unique shape then we have to select the name and whatever you want for the name so for this we want to change the size to 20 make it 600 which is good and then we have the title select this option and i think title looks good don't know need to change anything over here and finally go to advanced and add padding of 60 from all sides which will look something like this and let's also change the background color so here as you can see we have to change the background color to white and we have to add a very light shadow okay let's see how that is done first select background and change the color to white color right like this then after that select border and border radius maybe 20 pixels now you cannot see any changes because the background is already white but once we change the background color you will see all the required changes now finally let's first copy it paste it over here and you can do the required changes now we can do one thing let's see here as you can see the top color is this let me copy the color code top background color is this and the bottom is this white regular white color so first let's select this main row make it stretch as i've explained you earlier whenever you add anything in the background whether color or image you should always stretch that row now go to style and in the background use gradient at top we want this color that we have copied and at bottom we want transparent okay so we can make it transparent like this you see the first option is for color the second is to make it transparent so make it transparent like this now this will be 180 degrees okay so this color at top and transparent at bottom or instead of transparent if you want white color you can have that thing as well now angle uh, location we have selected oh this will be under angle location you can select this thing okay wherever you want this thing to end and wherever you want this thing to begin you can see the changes okay so you can set it like this okay and you can select this thing we have to also add box shadow very light box shadow select this thing border 
I'm not doing any changes in the shadow, but you can make it lighter, right? Like this. Now, if you do it like this, you can see this is how it is looking, all right? Let's add some spacing at top and bottom. So go to advanced and padding, not over here for the main row, select main row. Padding top, let's add 90 pixels at top. And now this is looking good. Just update this page. And finally, the very last section is this Instagram section. Before that, let's add some padding, not padding. Let's add some margin at bottom, maybe 90 pixels or whatever you want. Now for this also, we want title and subtitle. So we'll add a new row column, copy the title and subtitle from top, copy it, paste it over here. And then we have the title, copy it and obviously paste it over here. You can change the text and everything. Now below that thing, we have this, you know, gallery or carousel, whatever it is. So you can search for image carousel, bring it at the bottom and upload all the images that you want. Okay. So you can click on upload images. So you can upload these images like this and click on open. Now, whatever all images you want, you can select them and click on create a new gallery. Obviously you have to use your own images. This is how it will look by default, make it full. Okay. And after that slides to show. Here, as you can see, we are displaying five slides at a time. So we'll select five like this. And after that scroll and everything image stretch or not, you can select that thing. And again, make sure this row is stretch and column gap is no gap. Then after that, select the column with content width and make it full width. Now, if you see, this is how it will look like. All right. We don't want this thing. Uh, we don't want this navigation dot navigation. So we can click on this thing and Let's see, we, we want only arrows or maybe we don't want anything. Okay, so we can disable that thing. And let's see, we don't have anything in the background. We don't have space and everything. So we can just cl click on update. And with this, you have completed your home page. Now, whenever you create any page, you should always see how this website looks on a mobile phone and on a tablet, just to make sure that your website is 100% mobile and tablet friendly. Now to see this, now for that, you'll have to click on this icon at the bottom left, responsive mode, click on that and select mobile phone. Now go ahead top. I would recommend you to make the width 440. Okay. Just so that we have a realistic, you know, view. This is how it is looking on mobile phone. As you can see, we have to fix a lot of things. First of all, select the first text, make it center, select the second text, make it center as well. And also change the size. We don't want this big for mobile phone. Maybe 35 is good. Okay. And we also need some spacing. First of all, also, I don't want this image in the mobile phone. So I can completely, you know, disable this column. So select this column, edit column, go to advanced responsive, and I can hide this thing on mobile phone. Okay. Then after that, select this text, click on update. Let's see how it is looking on mobile phone. First of all, if I open this website, refresh it. If you inspect element, you have this mobile phone option. If you click on responsive, Okay, as you can see, this is looking beautiful. We have a nice amount of space at top and bottom as well. Now the second section is this section. If you want to display it like this, you can have it. Or if you want, you can fix one thing. You can click on edit column and you can make it like 50, 50 percentage. Select the second edit column, make it 50 percentage. And for the third one, you can again disable this one. Okay. On mobile phone. So only two sections will be displayed. Now this is looking good. Maybe we can fix the sizing, select this thing. Let's see. So we can decrease some margin. We can add some negative margin at the bottom. If you want to decrease the sizing or everything is looking good. Now select this text. This is looking pretty big in mobile phone and let's make it maybe 35, right? Now again, select this text as well. We don't want any uh, percentage at left and right. So make it zero and you can even decrease the size as well. We want to decrease two columns, uh, two products in a row, but we'll fix that later on. For now, it is looking good. And rest everything is looking good, I guess. All right. For this also, just change this thing to 35. All right. Now click on update. Now your website is 100% mobile friendly. You can also make it tab tablet friendly. And with this, we have completed our home page. A lot of things are still left. For example, the heart icon is over here. The image is looking boxier. We want to fix the image size and everything, but for now the page is completed. Now, once you do this thing, you can now go ahead and come back to your dashboard. Now we have to create some more pages. Like we have to create the about page, blog page and so on. But before we create our blog page, first we'll need to create different blog posts. 
So if you see the blog page here, we have created different blog posts. If you open a single blog post, this is how it is looking. So for that, to create a new blog post, click on post from the left hand side. First of all, delete this hello world dummy blog post, create a new one by clicking on this add new button. Now, first of all, we have the title. This is the blog post title. So I'll copy it, paste it over here. Then after that, whatever your content is. So you can add any content like this. You want, if you want to style this thing, for example, first, let me just add a regular text. Okay. I'll just paste it like this, like a regular text. And after that, if you want to increase or decrease the size, for example, here, as you can see, we have different sizes. If you want, you can select a custom size like 35 pixels or 25 pixels. Okay. At the right hand side, if you also want, you can make it drop cap. Maybe let me make it 20 pixels. Then we have a regular text, copy it, paste it over here at the bottom regular text. Okay. As you can see, you can decrease the size. The size is default. You can increase or decrease this thing if you want. Then below this thing, we have this thing. Uh, again, let me copy this much text. This is a block quote, but I'll just add it like this. Click on this plus button, search for quote. Here you have your quote. Now enter your quote and enter your citation. So this is the citation. Okay. Now this will give you this style. Then we have this thing again, simple text, paste it simple text. And after that, we have this image at the left hand side and this text at the right hand side. So for this, you can add two columns, click on this plus button, search for columns. So just like uh, we have done, we have seen in Elementor, this is, this also works really similarly. So click on it, columns, select two columns, but uh, it should be like 30, 70, not 50, 50. If you want, you can even uh, change this thing. Like instead of 30, 70, if you want to change this thing, you can do that thing as well. Now select the first column and add some image in this column. Okay. Whatever image you want go to media library. Maybe if you want to add, let's see this image, you can add this image and at the right hand side, if you want to add simple text or whatever you want, just go ahead, click on this plus button, select paragraph, add whatever your text is again, just like this. So you can use this element to design it. Now click on post at the right hand side give some category. So I'll just give it under, I'll add this under news category. Now remember this category is different from the products category that was for products. This is just for blog post. Similarly, you can add some tags for blog post news or whatever you want. Okay. Fashion, whatever the topic and post is, then you can add some featured image. Okay. Let me upload some featured image for this. Let's upload this image. Click on set featured image. And after that, you can just go ahead and publish this post. So this is how a single blog post is created. Now let's create a few more pages. Go to pages. Let's very first create the blog page. Okay. Give it a title of blog. Now, just like we set the home page, you also have to set the blog page. So if you come back to your dashboard, hover over settings, click on reading here under post page, we have to set this blog page and click on save changes. Now again, come back to pages. Let's create a track order page, which is also a very simple page. Let's give it a title of track order and to enable this page again, you have to go to that WooCommerce dashboard page, WooCommerce short code page. Now on this short code page, you will see at the very top WooCommerce order tracking. Okay. You have to, let me show you that thing. Yeah. We have to copy this thing. Okay. WooCommerce under order tracking under square brackets. This is the short code, but it should be under square brackets like this. Let me show you. First click on this plus button, search for short code element. Here it is and paste in this thing. WooCommerce order tracking under square brackets. Now publish this page. Okay. So this is your track order page. And finally we have the contact us page. So for that, we'll have to come over here, come back to dashboard, click on add new, add a new page, give it a title of contact or contact us and publish it. Now we'll edit this with Elementor, but you don't really have to worry about this. We don't have to create it from scratch. I'll give you a template. You can just import it. Click on add template, this button, go to my templates, click on this import button, import template button, select file. And under pages, the media file that you have downloaded under that, you will see pages folder. And under that, you will see contact page Woostify. Open that. If you see this problem and error occurred, please try again or anything like that. You can go to your dashboard. Click on templates and you can import that from here. So click on import templates, choose file, select contact page Woostify and import it from here. And now as you can see, this is imported. You can come back, 
let's try it again click on add template and now as you can see it is showing insert this thing now at top you will see this map instead of this map obviously instead of this location you would want to you know display your location so you can click on this pencil button and you can type in whatever your location is type in your exact location it will detect it okay and if you want you can zoom in zoom out like this then we have the details so instead of this phone number if you want to enter your phone number just go ahead and replace it with your phone number similarly for address and all now this contact form will not display properly so to fix this thing go back to your dashboard click on contact again open the media folder and in that you will see pages and in that you will see contact form open this one copy everything create a new form click on add new give it a title of maybe contact form or whatever you want now delete everything from here and paste in whatever you have copied click on save now you'll get this short code copy the short code come over here and replace it with this short code you will get your contact form update it and with this you have also com completed and created your contact page now finally only the header and footer is left and final customization is left after that we'll see a demo order i'll show you how an order is placed and how you can fulfill that order so header and footer first let's create a menu for the header so to create a new menu will hover over appearance click on menus first let's create a main menu so under main men uh, under menu name type in main menu click on create menu and here as you can see we have the home page shop page blog track order and about page so we'll click on all pages home blog contact and shop track order these pages okay and if you want you can you now do it like this okay you can rearrange them and if you want to display woocommerce categories as well you can click on screen options at top select product categories and come over here under product categories what all categories you want you can display them okay and you can bring it under uh, under this shop link now make sure to tick mark this thing primary menu click on save menu then after that we also need to create these two menus shop menu and support menu so let's create this shop menu click on create a new menu give it a title of shop here we want home page here we want the shop orders downloads and my account so first click on create menu now these pages will be under woocommerce endpoints here as you can see we have orders downloads logout and main page my account page will be over here under pages okay let's bring it at top don't need to tick mark anything at bottom just click on save menu now click on create a new menu let's create this support menu track order wish list and contact page support create a new menu and let's add these three pages and let's see track order wish list and shop page okay save menu now once you have created these menus now we can cover and we can fix the widgets so click on widgets now sometimes you might have some problem with the regular widget this is the regular widget so for example first let's refresh this website you will see the menu will be present for you but we have to fix the footer now to fix the footer first we have to enable footer and to do that you have to click on customize at top again and we have to set how many columns we want in the footer so for that you have to click on layout and select footer and how many columns you want so maybe we want four columns select four rest everything we'll see later on like as you can see this is how it is looking you can also fix the footer copyright text so at bottom copyright 2021 site name powered by theme author so i don't want this powered by theme author i want this to say made by nayashik or whatever you want okay i don't want that theme author name now you can click on publish you can also change the styling by the way you can go to style for example background color i want to make it black okay this black color okay and text color if you want you can some make it some other color you can always you know rearrange this thing you can also reset always reset this page so maybe we want this color as our background color come over here paste in this color code okay then text color heading color whatever you want link color we want this black color text color also i want this black color okay you can set any color you want now click on publish now you can come over here under widget and you can reload it and after that you can add your options over here. Now sometimes you might face some problem using the regular widget area. So you can do one thing instead of this you can use the classic widgets. 
For that, you'll have to open and you have to install a new plugin. So click on add new and search. You'll see right at top here. You don't even have to search for that. And as you can see, this is very famous, very popular, 800,000 active installations. Install this plugin, Classic Widgets. This will replace this modern widget with the classic one, which is a much better one and activate it. Again, if you go to the same page, Appearance Widgets, you will see this page will look very different. Okay. Now, right now we want to fix the footer first. So under footer first, we have this text. We have the title and after that we have the text. Okay. So I'll copy this much like this and we'll use this option. Okay. We'll use the text option. Select text, select footer widget, click on add widget. Okay. This is my text like this. I'll paste it. Now just paste it regularly. You will see Wustify instead of Wustify, replace it with your website name or with your brand name. Click on save. Second, we have the menu. So I'll search for this option navigation menu, which is this select navigation menu over here, not this one navigation menu footer widget click on add widget title will be shop and we want the shop menu then we again want navigation menu for footer widget this time title is support and we want this support menu that we have just created and finally at the end we have this newsletter section so for that again we'll come over here and let's see what we have we have we have to display this thing first let's create this form so this form will be created under contact. So open the contact option. Let's create another form. Let's give it a title of MailChimp or newsletter form. Again, open the file that you have downloaded and open this one footer newsletter. Copy everything. Come over here. Paste it over here. Now save it. Once you save this thing, copy the short code. Come back to this website and come back to the widget screen. First, we need some text and then we need the short code. So for this, I think we can use the text option. Okay. Use the text option. Go to style, paste in the short code and at top of this short code, type in whatever text you want. Okay. Like this now click on, and also we want the title newsletter. Okay. All right. Let's see well, how it is working. Cut the customization thing for now, scroll down. And now as you can see, this is working absolutely fine. Now we need to add two more footer options, two more sidebar options. Basically, if you go to shop page, this is how your shop page is looking right now. First of all, we want to write right side shop page. So click on customize again. And we want this, we want this sidebar at the left hand side, click on layout and uh, sidebar. And for the shop page, select left sidebar shop product archive, left sidebar. Okay. Publish it again, cut it. Come back to widgets. Now we have to use the WooCommerce sidebar. If you see in the home page, in the shop page for the demo website, first we have the search. So you can search for that. Okay. Product search, select this thing. If you want to, you can even use regular search. We want to bring it over here under WooCommerce sidebar. Then we have filter by price. Let's search for that product filter by price. Here it is. Filter, pro not this one, filter product by price, select WooCommerce sidebar. Okay. Then we have a filter by color. So product filter by attribute, add widget and under attribute, select color. So filter by color under title, save it. Then we have a top rated products. So we can use this one filter products by rating. Okay. Average rating or top rated products, whatever product categories. Let's search for this one product categories. Here it is. Then we have tags, okay. Product tags, product tag cloud. Use this one as well. Again, if you come back to this page, refresh it. Now, as you can see, this is how it is looking. People can search for product filter price, everything. Okay. Everything is present over here. Then we also want uh, for the block page. Okay. Here, as you can see, we have this sidebar. Let's fix this sidebar as well. This is the main sidebar. So delete everything from here. All these blocks that you see, delete it. All right. Now inside this thing, we want to do one thing. We want to, first of all, let's see what we have uh, in the dashboard in the demo website. 
we have this search. This is regular search, not the product search. So this will search blog post. So search for regular search. Here is the regular search. Select main sidebar. And then we have a recent post. Okay, so search for recent post. We have to select this one, Woostify recent post. Okay. And how many recent posts do you want to display? You can select that thing. Then we have categories, regular categories and tags. So regular categories, we have it over here. And regular tags, which is at the bottom. Tag cloud, regular tag cloud. Okay, so this will give you this sidebar. All right, so this sidebar and everything is completed. Now, before we do the final customization, I think I should first show you a demo checkout, how checkout, how this thing works. So people can come to your website, they can register, they can create a new account if they want. So for example, let me do one thing. Let me come over here. Let me try to add a new product or maybe let's do one thing. Let's open this website in a new private window, incognito window. Let's see whether we are able to do everything or not. Now, as you can see in the new private window, I'm logged out and everything. I'm seeing this web website as a new visitor or a customer. Now, suppose if I want to add this product in my wish list, I can add it. As you can see, it is working. If I go to my wish list page, it is working. If I open this product, let's see, this is also working. If I want to add this product in my cart, can do that. Go to view cart. Okay. This is working. Shipping and everything is automatically applied. GST is applied. I can go to proceed to checkout. All right. Let me enter my name, some dummy name, John Doe, country address, town, Maharashtra, pin code, something, something, all right, some phone number and some email address. Now here as you can see, if I want, I can just create a new account with this and I can set a username and password. Maybe this is my username and some password. All right. So I've set and then you can do one thing. Here as you can see GST is applied, shipping is applied. If I change instead of Maharashtra, if I change maybe Manipur, you will see shipping is changed. Okay. Again, if I change back to Maharashtra, shipping is changed. So this is working. You can pay through PayPal, credit debit card, through Razorpay, everything can be selected. Now after that, I'm still selecting cash on delivery. Here as you can see, because we have tick marked this thing, enter username and password. This will also create a new website, a new account for me on this website. Now if I click on place order. This order will be placed. I'll get my order details and everything. So this is my order detail, order number and everything. I can save the order number. And if I go to my dashboard, as you can see, new account is created for me. Here it says, hey, hello, John Doe. Okay. So I'm already logged in, automatically logged into this account. If I click on orders, I've placed this order processing. And every amount can be seen from here. Now from your end, this, is, this was from your visitors, customers end. What you will see, first of all, you will get a mail that you have a new order and you can see that thing. You can come back to your uh, dashboard. If you hover over WooCommerce, you can see under orders, it says one. So you have a new order. You can click on this order to process it. You can see this is the order black fashion jacket, one quantity. You can see everything where you have to ship. You can see the shipping address. You can see the phone number, email address of the customer. Now, once you ship this product, you can change the order status to here it is. You can change the order status to completed from here. And after that, you can just update the order. And with this, this order will be completed. This transaction will be completed. So this is how this thing works. Now let's again come back to this page. Let's do the final customization. Click on this customize link at top. Let's see one by one. First, we have the site identity. We have to set a logo. Click on this thing. And I think we have a logo. If you want, you can have your own logo, obviously. Let me see. Yeah, let's upload this logo. Click on open, select, skip cropping. Yeah, we have the logo. You can also select a retina logo. You can set the logo width, size and everything. I'll come back. Now layout, site container, top bar, how you want this thing, normal header. So what all things you want in the header? For example, we have, we have the search, we have the heart, we have the, all these things. So maybe I don't want search. Obviously you should not do that. Maybe I don't want the wish list. So I can off this thing. The heart icon, wish list icon will disappear. You should not be doing this thing. I'm just showing you that this is, this can work. Header background. If you want to change the header background color to some funky color, you can do that thing as well. If you want to make the header transparent, you can do that under block page. If you see the block page right now, 
you can say this is how it is looking i want to change the layout to this first one okay now click on publish now we have the block single single block page you can see that thing we have the footer we have seen the footer and everything come back color you can set primary and secondary color so here in, in this example as you can see my primary color is this color okay so i'll copy the color code okay bring it like this this is my primary color which i am using a lot so i'll use this as my primary color now once you do this thing as you can see everything this link color uh, this cart icon color everything will become this thing now for text color i want to use this black color okay inspect element variable this is the color that i want to use go to customize paste in the color code okay like this then link hover color you can change that thing extra color you can change all those things come back then we have the buttons if you select buttons button background color what you want uh, for example you will see this thing under shop page and single product page let's go to the shop page and let's open a single product so if i open this product for example this is the as you can see background color for this button maybe i don't want this color i want pink color or some random color you can have that thing as well okay then background hover color you can set that thing as well typography we think i think we have already set poppins and domine okay primary heading for heading you can set domino if you want WooCommerce now very important WooCommerce now under WooCommerce I want to do one thing let's see shop archive we have everything is good let's go to the shop page again so under shop archive if you want to change the structure whether you want to display the title and everything in finite scroll if you want to enable this thing now what all things you want to display so product content uh, here as you can see I'm displaying the title rating and add to cart so here as you can see title rating and add to cart are on rest everything is off if you want to make it, uh, if you want to also display category you can do that thing as well obviously you should not be doing that now we have the product image which let's see product images yeah here it is this is how it is looking i want to change this thing to 3 point uh, 3 by 4 aspect ratio okay 3 by 4 based on my image because my images uh, are like this like taller images if your images are different you can change the aspect ratio accordingly now click on publish then you can also change the single product style if you go to single product product images for example if you want them at the bottom product images now as you can see they are at the bottom similarly what all you want to display in the product image and one more thing yeah let's see that thing under product data tab uh, you can display you can create you know custom tabs so description additional and reviews are created if you want you can create a new tab and you can type in anything under that tab product meta all right we okay you can also add the trust badge over here click on add trust badge and you can add that trust badge from here so here as you can see let's search here as you can see save checkout you can upload this image as your trust badge like this click on publish come back now actually there are many more options but i want to cover this very quickly because we have already the tutorial is all already very lengthy so that is the reason why i'm going very quickly Share cart page setup. So if you go to your cart page, let's go to the cart page. Let's see how it looks. So this is how it is looking. If you see, this is the style we are following. If you want, you know, 180 degree top and bottom, you can follow that style as well. Then performance and everything. I think everything is good now. Yeah, one more thing. We want two products, you know, side by side for the mobile phone. So I think that is under WooCommerce product catalog. Okay, under product catalog, if you see, if I see this website in a mobile phone, this is how it is looking. Now for mobile phone products per row, I can make it two. Okay, let's increase this thing two. And now as you can see, it will display two products per row in mobile phone. So you can set this thing and publish it. Again, come back to desktop. Rest everything is looking absolutely fine. Let's cut this thing. And with this, we have completed this tutorial. I hope you guys find this tutorial helpful. If you find this tutorial helpful, if you have learned something new, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any future notification, you don't miss any future videos. If you like this video, give a thumbs up to this video, share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever social media platform you use. And throughout the video, if you have any doubts, any comments, any suggestions for me, you can always leave them in the comments section below. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next one.